It's a sweltering Saturday night at the Great American Speedway, Texas Motor Speedway, where in less than an hour, the green flag drops on tonight's Firestone 550. With the month of May and Indianapolis behind them, the stars of the IZOD IndyCar Series now prepare for the heat of summer racing and the drive for the 2010 season championship. Welcome to IndyCar Central on Versus, where we'll set the stage for tonight's 228 lap race. Hi, I'm Lindy Thaxton on the Versus stage right here next to turn four. We've barely had any time since the chaos of the 500 to settle, but here we are. The drivers have to go side by side here, and this is the most severe banking in our series. Think about it. When they are traveling on the 24-degree banking at over 200 miles per hour, they will experience a total G-force of more than 5 Gs. That, on top of the fact, it is really hot out here. But let's face it, here and even you at home across the country are still talking about the final laps of last week's 500, where no one knew if Dario Franchitti would be able to hold on to win his second straight title in Indy. And the race is on! There's a target on that machine. Yep. Thanks, Dario. And now let's take a look at where we stand on points, because as you see for the first time since Long Beach, really, there is the potential for a points lead change tonight. Frankini moved from fifth to second with his 500 win, and now he is within reach of Will Power. That pushed Dixon to third and Castro Nevis to fourth, and that's despite Elio getting 15 bonus points for winning the 500 pole. And remember, for the first time this season, we have an oval and a road and street course champ. Here's our first look at the standings for the A.J. Foyt Trophy. That's given to the top oval driver. By the way, the fans voted on the trophy name. After two oval races, Frankini leads his Ganassi teammate Dixon by 12 points with Castroneves in third. Meanwhile, Elio's teammate Will Power leads the road and street course standings with a sizable lead over him. The next road course race is in Watkins Glen July 4th. The road and street trophy name will be announced that weekend. Also is voted by you, the fans at home. And let's talk about Scott Dixon. He's starting fourth tonight. He won here at Texas in 08 from pole position. Stay with us. IndyCar Central versus his We're in the Lone Star State as one star still basks in the glory of last Sunday's Indianapolis 500 win. But Dario Franchitti knows there's little time. His victory celebration might be interrupted tonight. 26 of the world's best drivers want to make sure he doesn't make it back-to-back -back wins on the high bank turns of Texas Motor Speedway. is a sweltering Saturday night at the Great American Speedway, Texas Motor Speedway, where in less than an hour, the green flag drops on tonight's Firestone 550. With the month of May and Indianapolis behind them, the stars of the Eyes on IndyCar Series now prepare for the heat of summer racing and the drive for the 2010 season championship. Welcome to IndyCar Central on Versus, where we will set the stage for tonight's 228 lap race. Hi, I'm Lindy Thaxton on the Versus stage just outside of turn four. We barely had any time for the chaos to settle since Indianapolis, but here we are. The drivers have to go side by side, and this is the most severe banking of anything in our series. Just think about it. They're traveling 24 degrees banking at over 200 miles per hour. They will experience a total G-force of more than five Gs. On top of that, obviously it's windy. It's really, really hot out here. But let's face it, here and even you at home across the country, you're still talking about the final laps of the 500, where no one knew for sure if Dario Franchitti would be hold on to win for his second title at Indy. And the race is 
on. There's a target on that machine, but nobody's been able to hit it for most of this day. Dario Franchini's been the man almost since the drop of the green flag. Dario down and away with tires and fuel. 37 laps remaining. The top four stayed out. It's Mike Conway, Justin Wilson, Elio Castroneves, Graham Rahal, the top four. Dario Franchini and Marco Andretti, fifth and sixth. Now Conway last pitted on lap 139. He is definitely going to have to make another stop. And here he comes. So he'll surrender the lead to Justin Wilson. 183 laps are complete for your leader, Justin Wilson. He needs a pit stop soon. Elio Castroneves, our pole sitter, runs second. Graham Rahal back to third. Dario Franchini is fourth. Tony Kanaan, who started 33rd, is fifth. Marco Andretti, he has had a great day, and he is currently sixth, being told to save fuel. Marco, everybody's in trouble. We can make this work. Dario needs 4.0. We need 4.1. He's in trouble, too. Justin Wilson and Graham Rahal now head to pit lane for the final time. Elio Castro Neves, he is out in front. The question at this point is can he make it on fuel? Oh, no, maybe not, maybe not, guys. Castro Neves is not going to get there, so Dario Franchitti is in position to win his second Indianapolis 500. Eight laps to go. Dario Franchitti is out in front. Tony Kanaan runs second. Dan Weldon is third. The difference, 1.4 seconds. This crowd goes wild as Tony Kanaan is right there. Four car lengths back for TK. He tries to make the move all the way to the front. Franchitti has some space, and Kanaan is heading to pit row. His chance to win is done. So the question is, does Dario Franchitti have enough fuel to finish this race? Take your time. Take your time. Well, this is one now. One lap to go. Does Dario have enough fuel? He is slowing down. Can Dan Weldon catch him? Weldon is catching Franchitti. Crash. We've got a crash. We've got a crash. Yeah, yeah, head up. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Back it down. Heavy carnage in the north end. A car hit a wall hard in the north end between three and four. Mike Conway and Ryan Hunter Ray, a two car incident. And this is going to mean that Dario Franchitti will, in fact, win his second Indy 500. A shame it has to end this way. The twin checkers are out. Dario Franchitti is a two time winner of the Indianapolis 500 mile race. Hey, baby, check a flag. Way to go, way to go. This means so much. This is, you know, to come back after going away for a year win the championship and I win the Indy 500. Stand your speech this right now. Dario joins us here now. First of all, are you even off of that high? <laughs> well, in some ways, yes, because on Tuesday, I thought, right, I got to get my head into gear here. I got Texas coming up. So uh, but that, that, that high lasts for a long time. The last one lasted for at least a couple of years. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully this one will last just as long. It's uh, just a, a great feeling on Sunday. Yeah, how hard is it to go from that to this? It was tough. It was tough because, um, you know, Monday night you're there celebrating with the target guys. We're having a good time at the banquet. And then you've got to think, OK, Texas now, because if you don't look forward, you're, you're going to get left behind in the championship. And that was that was um, same thing in 07 as well. But hopefully that can launch us into a, you know, a title challenge here. It's, uh, it's going to be tough, but hopefully we've got some momentum going now. I know it was busy for you, but I understand Monday morning you go and take photos and then your crew was nonstop. Yeah, my crew worked till midnight on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday night, so they could get uh, at least one day off before coming here. So it, it just never stop, you know, and, and the target team work incredibly hard, but so does every other team in this pit lane. Um, and we're lucky with the resources that we, we're given that um, you know, we can get to do the job, but it, it, it's tough. Um, and I think as drivers, we do get the easy job. You've been running at five of the six finishes that you've been here. What's the key? <laughs> Dude, trying to stay out of trouble, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we almost we ran out of fuel last year coming uh, out of turn four. Um, staying out of trouble, I would say, but sometimes here you can't help it. You just get caught up in someone else's accident. It's uh, it's definitely a stressful night for the for the drivers and the teams. The fans love it, but for us, it's uh, it, it is a stressful one. How's your car feel? Yeah, not bad. We're running the Energizer car this weekend. Um, had to kind of find out which one it was before I jumped in it there. Um, <laughs> But it's uh, it's not bad. It was I was surprised how fast it was in qualifying. I really was. But uh, race trim last night, yeah, not bad. Sounds good, Dario. We need to let you get ready for driver intros. Thank you so much for coming up here. No worries. Thanks for having me. And now let's take a look at the points because, as you see, for the first time really since Long Beach, there is the potential for a points lead change tonight. Franchitti moved from fifth to second with his 500 win, and he is within reach of Will Power. That pushed Dixon down to third and Castro Nevis to fourth, and that's despite Elio getting 15 bonus points for winning the 500 pole. 
And remember, for the first time this season, we have an oval and a road and street course champion. And here is our first look at the standings for the A.J. Foyt Trophy that's given to the top oval driver. By the way, the fans voted on the trophy name. After two oval races, Frankini leads his Ganassi teammate Dixon by 12 points with Castro Nevis in third. Meanwhile, Elio's teammate, Will Power, leads the road and street course standings with a sizable lead over him. The next road course race is in Watkins Glen, July 4th. The road and street trophy name will be announced that weekend, also as voted by you, the fans at home. Scott Dixon is starting fourth tonight. He won here in Texas in 2008 from the pole position. He's led 121 laps. As we said, he's starting fourth. We'll see what he can do. Stay with us. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway, where IndyCar Central on versus rolls on. And if you are at all familiar with the Great American Speedway, you know they know how to put on a good show. You want an example? Here you go. Right before we came on the air, Daredevil legend Robbie Knievel wowed the crowd when he jumped over a whole bunch of local service vehicles. By the way, that is more than 200 feet. And he made it. One of the traditions here, by the way, it's really unique. It's how they do the driver introductions. Each driver, the stands you're looking at, they actually walk down them when they're introduced. We sent our own Jack Aroot into the crowd to catch up with a guy who will be staring right at the Penske and Ganassi cars when that green flag drops. And, and Lindy, it's the first time that Alex Lloyd is going to make this walk down these stairs to the cheer of the crowd. You did pretty well qualifying sixth. What was it about Texas that really this Boy Scout of America car started to like so much? I don't know. I mean, we've, we've been working really hard all year to try and improve the package, and really I think we found we saw some of the rewards from that at Indianapolis, and I was really keen to see how, how we do here. I mean, it's obviously a very different track to Indy, but the Boy Scouts guys did a great job, and we started off, rolled out the truck pretty strong, and obviously a good qualifying, so pretty eager to get going here and see how we do tonight, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's a fantastic track, great facility, should be a good race. We were treated to some exciting, and some people actually said freaky practice last night in the final practice. What did you learn there? I learned that it's going to be it's going to be a tough night. I mean, it's concentration is premium. Uh, you know, this is a fast track, and when you're running inches apart, you know, for two, three wide, and it's probably going to be like that for most of the race. I think we're all going to be mentally drained more than anything else at the end of it, and obviously the heat, everything like that. So, it's going to be a crazy race. I certainly hope to try and stay in that front group, where hopefully it'll be a little less crazy, and we can uh, we can have a good patient day and be there at the end. Alex, good luck, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let's check in with Robbie Floyd. He's got someone that'll get a lot of cheers, huh, Robbie? <laughs> yeah, I did about a thousand fans around me. I mean, literally in this 10-foot spot. Denica Patrick, the fans love you here. They love that you finished sixth place. That was a heck of a turnaround from an ill-handling car early at Indy to finish sixth. Yeah, thanks. It was a good comeback. We uh, we kept our heads down. The guys did a great job on the stops, and uh, you know, we finally got the GoDaddy car up to where it should have been. Um, Working really hard here at Texas too. I think that uh, I think we're gonna have a good car. I I, I don't know how it's gonna go down. I think it's gonna be really crazy today. Um, all of us are so such a similar speed that uh, well, I think it's gonna be good for the fans. We listen to your scanners and hear how you talk to the you know your crew and, and let them know what the car is doing. And you said I think this is a good car right off the bat yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We and we made uh, we made a, a really good change really early, so that helped to be able to work even more. Um, and you know it's always nice when you can get a car to a point where you can. And actually start to think about speed and some other things so um, you know I uh, I don't know what to think like I said because of because of how crazy it's gonna be out there but I think that we have a pretty good car at this point one and a half mile oval at Kansas now back at the one and a half is it your comfort zone you're back on the ovals you're done with the road for a bit yeah um, well uh, you know I, I still have good results on the road courses every now and again but it's that darn qualifying so um, we're starting off okay I think we're starting eighth today so um, so that's not too bad there's 26 cars which is a ton of cars so it's gonna be really Really important to uh, carve through traffic, be able to use all of the all of the space out there, and um, you know, go where you need to go to get clear. Good luck, have fun out there. How many Danica Patrick fans are in here? Yo? Wow, <laughs> look at that crowd around her. Thank you, Robbie. And as those driver intros continue, we want to give you some driver updates. First off, Davey Hamilton, he was scheduled to race here tonight, nine years after a horrific accident here left him seriously injured. It would have been the first time Hamilton raced outside of Indy since that race. 
But he was involved in a crash with Thomas Schechter last week, and his DeFerrin Dragon Racing teammate Rafa Matos was caught up in a later tangle. The team could only prepare one car this week for Matos. And Schechter will be back driving for Dreyer and Reinbold this week after finishing 15th at Indy. Thomas will drive the number 24 car tonight, filling in for the injured Mike Conway, who is out for at least three months, but we are happy to report he has been released from the hospital. And when we return here to Texas Motor Speedway, I will be joined by our own Robbie Buell and Jan Vegas to talk about those wild final laps of the 500. This is IndyCar Central on Versus. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway and IndyCar Central here on Versus. The Firestone 550 is going to start here shortly, but right now I want to bring in Jan Vegas and Robbie Buell to talk about the final laps of the 500. First of all, Robbie, how is Mike Conway? Well, Mike, I know you're watching. Hello, everybody from here sends their best for a speedy recovery. An update on Mike, incredibly, he's been released from the hospital, so that's great news. Now he's got a tough road to recovery. But what's incredible, possibly in three months, he's gonna be back in a race car. So we're all pulling for you from that. We gotta know though, for Mike, for any driver, to not be here while all his buddies are racing and watching his car run around here, uh, it's a tough deal, Lindy. It is tough, Robbie. If we go back to look to see what unfolded that led to that accident, you go to the back straightaway, look at the difference in speed. Ryan Hunter Ray is 209, Danica Patrick 210. They're saving fuel, but look at the difference. Mike Conway 219 and his teammate Justin Wilson, the lap before that, that's 221 miles an hour as an average. And look at the run that Mike has. And Ryan Hunter Ray, it's almost like the parachute's going to pop when he runs out of gas. Mike has nowhere to go but over of him and into the fence. When you look at that disparity in speed, you can look like Brian Hunter Ray is looking good, but he found out right when he got into the corner, that was definitely not the case. It's not how people think. It's not like in your road car where you have uh, an actual uh, a meter in there that, that registers how much fuel you have. It's all done off calibration, off, off of math. There's, there's no exact science to it, uh, but we, 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 uh, I knew it was coming at some point, and when it, when it ran out of fuel, it was like hitting on the brakes. I mean, it just went from full pipe all the way, just the engine was shut down. And uh, it, it's unfortunate because there was nowhere for Mike to go. And the immediate second that I ran out of fuel, he was already launching over me. And when you look at that scenario, Robbie, and it's worth talking about, a lot of people, Lindy, were talking about, well, how do you end up with these fuel races? It wouldn't matter how much fuel you have in the tank, if you have 22 gallons, 32, 42, there's always going to be somebody that'll bring out a caution randomly. In this case, Sebastian Saavedra crashes. There's a caution at 163. If you're a leader, Robbie, you've got to pit. Because if there's a caution towards the end of the race, you'd give away the Indy 500 if you didn't. It forces you into saving fuel, but unfortunately, it makes it dangerous also. It does. And fuel strategy has always been a part of the IndyCar races. But I think the series has always been very good about making things safer. So they really should look at this and say, hey, is there something we can do? We got a crash race car, a guy in the hospital. What can we do so he doesn't stumble and run out of gas and, and hit that handbrake? Maybe something they look at doing is saying, you got to finish this race and go through post-tech with a gallon of gas in the car. Still having fuel strategy, but not stumbling and coming to a stop, if you will. Now, having to finish the race with some ethanol certainly would be fantastic from a safety standpoint, but you have to weigh the differences. You could have someone win the race, then they have to go to post-race tech, and they may not have actually been the winner of the Indy 500. So that's a tough thing to balance. I know the series wants to look at it. Yeah. Well, let's bring in Jack Arood. He's in our IZOD Pit Performance Center. And Jack, fortunately, there have just been so many advancements in safety over the years. And Lindy, I think that's the case. That's something that we've got to keep in mind. What the IZOD IndyCar Series has tried to do is each and every time there's an accident, they want to widen the margin, make the envelope even bigger for survivability. We're talking about things like these accelerometers that all the drivers wear that measure the G-forces and the impact of a crash. The helmet technology has gone up. And in fact, to the point where if you take a look over the last 10 years, the number of safety innovations that have taken place are astounding. Starting with the safer barrier that you can see behind our graphic. We've all heard about the Hans device. It's a hats off bladder. It's a blow up that allows the helmet to come off in the case of an injury. The gearbox attenuator has reduced the injuries caused by backing into the wall. Everything is measured by a crash data recorder. And remember the SWIM system? They're basically tethers. The bottom line is 
that whenever we see a horrific accident like what occurred to Mike Conway, that's when the eyes at IndyCar officials download the data into a box like this, analyze it, and then they make continued improvements. I think that's all you can ask of a sport where injury is part and parcel to competing. Thank you so much, Jack, for that. And thank you, Jan and Robbie, for being here to talk about it. We could talk on and on and on about it, but bottom line is Mike Conway is okay. He's out of the hospital. And for that, we really could not be more thankful. Well, now let's turn to some news happening that we want to pass along to you. First of all, a Baltimore race has been added. It is August 5th through the 7th. It's a 2.4 mile temporary road course incorporating the Inner Harbor and Camden Yards. And then also the new engine platform that will debut in 2000. 12. A maximum of six cylinders, maximum displacement, 2.4 cubic liters, 550 to 700 horsepower, turbocharged. There was a press conference about it earlier today. Take a listen. We listened to the fans. We listened to the participants and particularly the owners and the drivers and the manufacturers. And while there was no clear consensus on the direction to reinvent the IndyCar series itself, there was one overriding clear mandate and that's to make the series attractive for manufacturers to enter and bring back the variety to the engine and the chassis manufacturers participating in the series. And the board hopes to have an announcement on the chassis by the end of this month. Well, now let's salute the Mazda Road to Indy drivers who won last weekend in Indianapolis. Wade Cunningham won his third Freedom 100, the Firestone Indy Lights race held on Carb Day, while Connor Daly won his star Mazda class and Patrick McKenna, his U.S thousand race last Saturday. Drivers including Marco Andretti, Simona Di Silvestro, and Graham Rahal, they have all used Mazda powered series as stepping stones to the IndyCar level. On any given weekend, more Mazda and Mazda powered cars are raced on circuits across North America than any other car. Well, were you surprised at Penske's results at the 500? When we come back, we'll talk to the drivers from Team Penske trying to put all that disappointment behind them. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. There have been 20 races here at Texas, 14 different winners. Two races were the conclusion to legendary careers. Back in the day when they raced twice a year here in Texas, Al Unser Jr. won the spring race, the final win of his career. And then in 2003, Jill DeFerrin won from pole position. It was his last race of the IndyCar season. DeFerrin drove for Roger Penske that year, one of five wins Penske has here at Texas. Elio Castroneves has three of those wins, Sam Hornish the other. Hornish also won two other times at Texas, driving for John Barnes and Panther Racing. And speaking of Penske, last Sunday at any given time, it appeared any of the three Penske drivers could win, Elio, Will, or Ryan Briscoe, to give Penske his 16th win at Indy, but in ways that surprised many, it simply was not meant to be. A major problem, part of the fuel hose is still attached to Will Power's car. A major issue for Team Penske. Elio Castroneves has been getting better and better as the race progresses. Fuel is out, oh, Elio stalls it. Elio stalled it in pit lane. These are the kind of mistakes that you just can't afford. A costly mistake for Roger Penske's team. We got a problem on the front straight. Car on the wall, it is Ryan Briscoe. He had just completed his pit stop and Briscoe has big problems with the right side of the car. It has been an unpredictable day for sure. And Ryan Briscoe, some last minute adjustments for you making out here. The fans yeah. showing how much appreciation they have for you yeah. taking the pole here. Is the car as good as it was last year? That's what I want to know. I hope so. It's a bit hotter out there. We have a new tire, but uh, it felt pretty strong yesterday. So for all of us. Yesterday's when you learned everything about the car. What did it feel like? Um, the tires are going off a little bit during a stint, so I think uh, we're going to find out more towards the second half of every stint, but I think we're all in the same boat with this temperature, and uh, it should be exciting. Hopefully, to keep the Team Penske cars up front. Good luck. Have fun out there. There's your pole sitter, Ryan Bresco, Jack Aroot. And I'm with his teammate, Elio Castroneves, that's waiting for his Corvette ride. Okay, Elio, it's game time. You got your game face on. What are you going to do to be able to repeat your victory from last year? Well, certainly you've got to be there in the end. Uh, we can see that Ryan and uh, uh, Will and plus the Ganassi guys are very fast. So we're just going to stay out of trouble, be good on the pits because that's the most important thing and uh, hopefully be there in the end. Now, listen, I, one of the things I want to ask you is 
Do you ever get tired of coming down the steps? Do you ever get tired of all of the hoopla that your friend Eddie Gossage? The reason not, because every time you come down the steps, the crowd getting more excited. Every year is getting better and better, so it's great for us. Thank you, Texas. Well, I'll tell you what, let's walk you over here because I think that you're probably next in line with the Corvette. Don't worry about Dario Franchitti get in front of him because you've won it three times. The Indy 500, that is. Good luck, Elio. And as Elio Castroneves gets ready to take his circuit around the racetrack, I want to remind everybody, he's won here before, hasn't he? Elio Castroneves is looking to fire those six shooters in victory lane for a third time here at Texas Motor Speedway. Castroneves goes low, now the gloves are coming off. And Team Penske is back in first and second. This is the time that makes hay. And who's going to win the battle out? It's going to be Elio. Elio Castroneves comes off with corner number four, heads for the checkered flag. And Elio Castroneves wins at Texas, his 16th career win. Thanks so much for that, Robbie and Jack. And I'll tell you what, the crowd just loves this when the drivers in their introductions walk down right next to them. They just love that access. And it is windy here. It is hot here. It could not be a better night at Texas Motor Speedway. We promise you it's going to be a good race, so stick with us. Right now, though, we want to salute our National Guard hometown hero. Sergeant Manolo Travis Cabasal Jr. entered the Texas Army National Guard while in high school. He was deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring freedom. As an assistant team leader, his unit successfully completed missions that included capturing those improvised explosive device materials. Today, he is currently assigned to the Education and Incentives Branch of the Texas Recruiting and Retention Command as a guidance counselor. And that is today's National Guard hometown hero. And when IndyCar Central returns on Versus, Professor B introduces you to one of the behind-the-scenes heroes of the Indy 500 winning team. The green flag drops here at Texas Motor Speedway in less than 20 minutes on this 228-lap race, the 21st time we've raced here. Last Sunday, the celebration went on for a long time for members of Dario Franchitti's target Chip Ganassi racing team. One of those people, not long ago, thought he might actually get to drive into Victory Circle just like Dario did. Professor B introduces us. Last weekend's Indy 500 may have been Dario Franchitti's second but it was the first for his race engineer, Chris Simmons. Now, if that name sounds familiar, yes, it's the very same Chris Simmons that raced at the top of Indy Lights in the late 90s, now turned race engineer. I know when you started racing quarter midgets at seven, you probably dreamed of winning Indy as a driver. How does it shake up as an engineer? It's, uh, it's pretty special. When I moved to Indy in 96, uh, the IndyCar series had split into two, and I thought I might never make it to Indy, and uh, to get it done with the group of people we have here is pretty exciting. You took a pretty aggressive move. Dario talked about running light on downforce. You're at the front. That was the key. How risky of a move to run that light? It's really risky. I mean, 500 miles is a long way and it puts a lot of uh, pressure on Dario to, to get it to the end. But that's what you want for the last 100 miles. So that's what we had to do to win. Now, you and I have been doing a little homework. Show me your clipboard here. We've been talking about a setup sheet. So Chris has, of course, this is blank. So you don't have to try to zoom in on your TiVos and get the ultimate setup. But there is 154 variables on this setup sheet. And I'm going to take a walk from the car, from the front to the back, and quickly try and show you some of those. If we go to the front wing, obviously you have a choice of front wing, wicker, and end plate. Then when you go to the suspension, you have your lower mounting point that you can change anti-dive, track, and caster. On the outboard side, you have settings that can change your caster, your camber, then of course you have a push rod, which will do the ride height and the corner weight from side to side. You take steering arms, steering ratios, anti-roll bar, then you start talking aerodynamics. You go here to what they call blockers for the front of the radiators, that has to do with drag, cooling, and downforce. Underneath the car, you can move the actual ballast to change the weight distribution of the car, shutters to close down the exit of cooling, which affects downforce, then all the same settings at the rear of the car. You have a push rod to do ride height and weight jacking. You have all the same settings for roll center and all these various choices. And then of course the all important gearbox. I didn't mention underneath here. The reason this is covered 
That's the springs and dampers. That is where some of the real tricks take place and they don't want us to see any of those proprietary parts. So, if you take 154 variables, and let's say on a race weekend, you have a choice of 10 per, that total number of possibilities is in excess of a trillion possibilities. And in that trillion possibilities, one of the interesting stories we didn't get to share there was that when Chris Simmons drove for Team Green and Indy Lights, the person that moved into the IndyCar team was none other than Dario Franchitti. <laughs> so to this day, he teases him saying, hey man, you stole my ride. You put me Now as an engineer though, and as a driver, they've won it together. Well, the professor and Robbie Buell have made it up from downstairs with Lindy up here to the booth, and we're ready to go with this race. Now, obviously, Dario had exactly the right setup for last Sunday. You had to to win the Indy 500. But what I'm wondering tonight is, Robbie, do you have to have a perfect setup to win this race? Well, you're right. Dario, without a doubt, had the perfect set setup at the 500. But tonight, why these drivers love this racetrack is you don't have to have that perfect setup. The 24 degrees of banking helps the car rotate and turn through these corners. Now, having said that, the guys are going to work and tune on that race car all race long with wing adjustments, tire pressure adjustments to figure out where they want to be, the high groove, the low groove, and tune to have close to that perfect race car at the end of this thing. And Robbie, we learned something very interesting last night for practice, and then you and I just learned something coming from the stage with Lindy. We walked by the cars, and Robbie and I are looking at the aero <laughs> configurations, and we've seen something different. Overnight, they've put more downforce on these cars, meaning that even though they've been talking like, oh yeah, no big deal, People are concerned about the way that the car is going to go through a stint, that it's going to get loose in traffic, they're putting some more downforce on, so what I think that means, there'll be more give and take. We hope that means that there'll be more pack racing. Less than a week from Indianapolis, is there a physical strain on these drivers because it's been such a short time? Well, let's, let's take Dario, for example. I said, I said, hey, have you had a busy week after winning the 500? He's like, no, it's not been too bad. I had Tuesday all to myself. <laughs> but he said, he said, I knew that I had to get ready for Texas, and he had to drag his butt off the couch on Tuesday <laughs> and get into the gym because he had to be focused on how, how physically and mental tough this is, racing side by side at the speeds they do here. And I think it's fair to say, we can say this is not it probably the toughest place that you're going to race as far as mental running at these kind of speeds at banking and it's the first time ever that this race has been the week immediately following right. the Indy 500. So from a team standpoint, they're worn out. They had to get these yep. teams together. But now the drivers are like, wow, just come off the Indy 500 where you're threading the needle. Now you're wide open and really standing on it. The race will be much different than what we saw at Indianapolis, but it should be exciting. Stay with us. The Firestone 550 from Texas Motor Speedway is coming up on Versus. Dario Franchitti is a two-time winner of the Indianapolis 500-mile race. From the greatest spectacle in racing to the high speeds on high turn, Texas Motor Speedway. The IndyCar Series chase for the championship awaits at the end of the summer stretch. And tonight starts the season charge for the title. 500 champ Dario Franchitti's momentum will prove to be strong. And his teammate Scott Dixon has stolen the Longhorn State before. But both will have to fight fast, keep off Team Penske and defending Texas winner Elio Castro Davis and IndyCar Series points leader Will Power. As the summer sun goes down, the lights come up on 24 degrees of banking. It's a marriage between physical and mental strength for sure. It's that kind of element of fear. Temperatures near 100 degrees. Often with climate, conditions are always changing a bit. You need to be ready to react. Speeds at over 210 miles an hour. The only way you figure out you're going quick, it's when you crash. And it can happen in a split second. And the greatest G-forces in American racing. So you can only breathe in the straights. It is kind of unnatural, and it is a, it's almost a bit crazy what we do on these bigger ovals. The cards are on the table. Who will hold them here in Texas tonight? They gave me the nickname of Spider-Man, and the, trust me, not because it was saving lives. <laughs> The 
The Indianapolis 500 is just a memory as the IZOD IndyCar Series gallops on to the Firestone 550 at Texas Motor Speedway. The track that tops the list in races with close finishes. In 20 previous events on this one and a half mile high bank track, 15 have come down to a margin of victory of less than one second. Now the air, as Lindy indicated, is very heavy with heat and humidity in Fort Worth, Texas. The temperature was expected to get near 100 today. I don't think it made it, but it's now 95. The winds from the northeast at four miles an hour and the track temperature at 103 degrees. Thousands of race fans have come to see last Sunday's winner, Dario Franchitti, along with Elio, Scott, Ryan, Tony, Danica, and others battle it out at over 210 miles an hour. 26 cars taking the green flag to begin the 228 lap, 342 mile, 550 kilometer contest here at Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports here to give the command. Please welcome your Grand Marshal, Vice President of Operations for Acadian Ambulance, Clay Henry. Drivers, start your engines! Row one, hot. Now the driver alone in the cockpit begins to think about the task at hand and leading the field to the green flag will be Ryan Briscoe, who yesterday won the Peak Pole Award traveling 215.273 miles an hour. Now Team Penske drivers this year have won the pole for all but one race this year. That was, of course, the very first race of the year where Dario Franchitti started on the pole in Brazil by turning in the fastest qualifying speed. Cars begin to move away, and we get set for some exciting racing on this Saturday night from Fort Worth. Great to have you with us. Stay with us for the next couple of hours for absolutely fantastic racing. Here's the lineup. Besides Briscoe in the front row, Dario Franchitti starts alongside. In the second row, points leader Will Power and the 2008 Texas winner Scott Dixon. Row number three, defending race winner Elio Castro Nevis and Alex Lloyd coming off an impressive fourth place finish at Indianapolis. And if you want to pick a sleeper, look at Lloyd, who run, who's in there with the engineering staff, is Mitch Wright, who of course was involved with the engineering of Jeff Ward when he won here in 2002. Hideki Muto finished sixth here in 2008. Also, Danica Patrick, she starts in that row, was third here in 2007. Row number five consists of Mario Marias and Marco Andretti, the third place finisher last Sunday at Indianapolis. And carrying that momentum, that third place finish, Marco loves this trace track. And what I like about him, he likes the high side. He loves to challenge that high side and carry that momentum up there. Exciting. Starting 11th, Takuma Sato and then Justin Wilson. As you take a look at the rest of the starting lineup, the race has been won from the pole five times, most recently in 2008 by Scott Dixon. In October of 2001, there were 32 official lead changes here. In 1998, we had 10 different drivers lead the race. And in 2006, Elio won the race, but led only the final eight laps. There you see the rest of the starting lineup for tonight's event. Montos and Hunter Ray back in row number 12. And here is Jack Root in the IZOD Performance Pit Center. Guys, you notice we always talk about covering a football field a second. Well, look to the right of your screen. You will see that Daddy Gossage, the president of the Speedway, has located a 100-yard football field on the inside of the backstretch. Now, what we're going to do throughout the course of the night, right now the cars are going through there, they're traveling at maybe, oh, maybe what, 60 yards a second? 
when they crank it up and light the candle on this race, they're going to cover that football field faster than any Dallas Cowboy, faster than any New Orleans Saint, faster than any race car. We're talking about covering a football field in less than a second. Hold on to your hat, folks. <laughs> it's going to be good. Our onboard cameras tonight carried by Ryan hutter -Ray, hoping tonight will not be his final race for Andretti Autosport. Dan Weldon is in the National Guard car, who's finished third three times here. Tony Canon has a camera. He's the winner of the June race here in 2004. Marco Andretti finished fourth here last year. 500 winner Dario Franchitti will have an onboard camera starting outside of row number one. And we will also be on board with the pole sitter, Ryan Briscoe. And we are getting set for the green flag less than half a lap away. Right from the get-go, I would expect people will fight for the bottom of the racetrack. The bottom of the racetrack is the place you want to be when the tires are good. But Robbie, as it develops, you'll start slipping up. They will. They will start kind of punishing those front tires. And when the front of the car goes up the racetrack, they got to get out of the throttle. We have 20 overtake assists tonight with uh, 12 seconds each. We'll watch for that as the race progresses. Out of corner number four, they come. No start, no start. And there Yellow will be flag. no Yellow start. Yellow flag, no start. The front row took off way early, and so the uh, starter and race control decided that there would not be a green. The field and itself looked great, with the exception of, of the front row. <laughs> right. Hey, fellas, let me interrupt very quickly. You wouldn't believe this. I've never seen this before. Ryan Briscoe, Will Power, Scott Dixon, Elio Castroneves, they all used the push to pass at the drop of the green flag. Oops, no green flag, right? <laughs> yeah. That was wasted, huh? We'll try it again. Briscoe is just a bit eager. Dario Franchitti's car looks a little different this week. The Energizer is on the side of it, and so it is basically a black and red car and not all red. Let's see if we can do it again. The field really tightens up coming out of turn number four. Again, Briscoe is green, way green, out front, green. and they do give the green flag this time. The Apex Brazil green flag waves, and we are racing at Texas. And Briscoe really did the same thing coming off of Ford. He got that jump, and they did throw the green flag. And as a result, he's got four cars. Justin Wilson was at the very top of the racetrack, making it four wide. <laughs> and there's still three wide going through corner number three as they are about to complete lap number one. Look how tight the field is back in the mid portion of the track. And it's Briscoe leading lap one. Another guy back in the field in the black car with the yellow mirrors is Schechter, and we know Schechter loves to run on the high side. Look at the movement out of Marco's car, the Whoa. red light car. Man. Hey, look out. Look oh, out. Wow. It's only lap two, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> Nothing Weldon. like easing into it, Bob. Yeah, huh? right. Weldon gained three on the first lap. Schechter gained three. Matos two. Canon two. And Di Silvestro gained one. Good sparks coming up from the cars in turns one and two. I was really amazed as we were on board with TK looking over at Marco's car, the amount of movement he had in that car on the high side. Side by side for third position. Scott Dixon's going to see if he can stay on the high side, but look, he drifts back. So still at this point, if you're at the front of the line, you want to fight for the bottom. Alex Lloyd there in the white car. The Boy Scouts of America number 19 is with the leaders. He's and the, running in sixth. And the one thing, just to, to finish what Jan, you touched on at the top of the show here about what we noticed with all the cars with the side pod extensions on, is last night after the warm-up, a couple drivers I took, they said, you know what, we're going to need more grip than I thought tomorrow. So what they learned last night, they've transferred over, saying, i got to have more downforce than we thought in this car to really be stuck and get where I want on the racetrack. And one of those places where Weldon is right there on the high side of the racetrack. Trying to get around Danica Patrick. You can see her speed there up to 214 here on the front stretch. You can get a little bit of a side draft, but once you get here, now he's taking the long way around. So Danica should be able to exit the corner ahead but look at the speed you maintain more speed when you're on the high side that helps you on the next straightaway and it looked actually even looking back at Danica when she had to stay on the bottom there Jan that she actually had to get out of the throttle just crack the throttle look at Alex Lloyd yeah he's on it right up there on the high side of the racetrack 
running in fifth spot now. He's gained a position. And this is what has set the standard in recent years for IndyCar racing right yep. here. This three, three wide as they go into the corners. I mean, we had never seen this till we came to these high bank super speedways in the in the late 90s. I was part of it. And man, when I was in this pack, all I waited for was a yellow. You get in there. He had to lift. Oh, he sure lift did again. Lift. He went down a gear. He was like, no, I don't think I want to be down there. <laughs> Dario to the outside. Franchini trying to get the lead from Ryan Briscoe coming off oh, turn four. Oh, man. <laughs> Bob, you got choked off your chair there. <laughs> well, uh, I've said it time and time and again. This is heart-stopping, take-your-breath racing. <laughs> yes. And rem remember the speeds these guys are doing. They're doing 212 oh, yeah. lap averages. This is an 80 miles an hour warm-up like this. <laughs> it, it, is, it is incredibly intense for the drivers. You know, you're racing the guy in front of you, you got somebody to the righty, you got somebody behind you, and there could be two of them. But the drivers are always saying, that was fun. If, if you have a car <laughs> that lets you go on the high side, go on the low side, they love it. And I think that's where the fan appreciation, I always hear the drivers talk about the fans here at Texas. And part of it is, is because the drivers have so much fun when they have a car and can do the stuff that we're seeing that's that's put you off your chair almost twice now. Couple of times. Hey, fellas, fellas, I want you to take a look at the way Dario Franchitti's running. I've been watching his speeds at 206. Look at Scott Dixon. He's been consistently 209, 210. He's coming after his teammate. That's a bit of the ebb and flow, depending on if you're making a move or if you're in the toe. Wheel to wheel racing between Elio and Will Power. This is the third consecutive race here at Texas, and Ryan Briscoe has led. Last year, he led 160 laps before finishing in second. IndyCar nonstop for you. You won't miss a thing at the Firestone 550 at Texas Motor Speedway. Race settling down just a little bit. We don't see side-by-side -side racing up front, at least. Ryan Briscoe continues to hang on the lead by about two-tenths of a second over Dario Franchitti, the first four cars running within a second of each other. Dixon third, power fourth, and Elio Castroneves running in the fifth position. Well, I think right now, what you really want to see from the lead pack and everybody back through what they're watching is saying, okay, what's the pace that these guys are running? And up at the front, Briscoe and Frankie right now are running about laps of 211 miles an hour. Now, if you're further back in the draft, you know, you can suck up on those guys. You'll see bigger numbers. Um, look at this. We got Jay Howard in early. That is, anytime they're putting the screwdriver to the, the rear engine column, not, not a good sign. Down to Robbie. And guys, Jay Howard just a moment ago radioed his piss that he has lost power. He's going to bring it in. They're going to pull the hood off and take a look at the engine. But he's lost all power right now. He's hoping to get back out there, maybe salvage some points. But right now, his day is in a big world of hurt for Jay Howard. And of course, the Sarah Fisher racing team, Jay did not make the Indianapolis 500. And Alex Lloyd is right there in the thick of things. And he's running in six to the position between Elio and Andretti. We're on board with Dario Franchitti, who is running second, but getting a challenge from third place, Scott Dixon. So guys, what's it like to race here at Texas? You know, it's a tough race. It's, um, it's very uh, flat out. It's very close. Uh, to try and gain anything, you have to be very close to your competitor to try and get around the outside or whatever it is, and maybe a bit of intimidation with some wheels getting in there. I don't know. Like, it's you such do a, that, would you think? Well, you know, <laughs> not too often. Not to my teammate, of course. But, oh, thanks, mate. Um, you know, it's 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 cool to have races under the lights, and, and Texas for me, I think, was the first race I ever did under the lights uh, on an oval, and, and uh, it definitely adds to uh, the action and, and uh, being able to see how fast the cars are. I think Texas is one of those ones that the fans really love and the drivers love it when they get out of there in one piece because it's so, <laughs> it's so intense out there and it, there's so little margin for error and it can be scary at times but it is, uh, it's definitely a fan favourite. And Dario lets a car drift up there a little bit. He was certainly not on the line, the closest, uh, the shortest distance around here on that lap. Meanwhile, back in the pack, we've still got side-by-side -side racing. 
Danica Patrick is alongside E.J. Viso, and they are wheel to wheel. Dario did a great job of really summing up what this track is all about. It's intense, the fans love it, and, and the whole thing. And it does pick up a little different character when it does get dark. When, the, when you lose that ambient light and the track temperature changes, I love when it gets dark and you get into the true night racing portion. It's awesome. And what I tell everybody is you got to come to Texas at night because during the day, we just watch these cars go around and you get mesmerized and say, oh, they're not that fast. But when you come watch them at night, it really gives you a great sense of what the speed is. The light shining off the cars, it is incredible. We're in for that here in just a few minutes. Ryan Briscoe leads over Dario Franchitti at Texas Motor Speedway. We are back at Texas Motor Speedway. Ryan Briscoe is still leading. You saw a lot of good side-by-side -side racing in our non-stop as the leader approaches the slower traffic. Will Power took over second position from Dario Franchitti, yeah, and Danica. Danica is on the move. Man. Wow. And that's P5, so we just saw her go by Lloyd as well as Elio, and pulling away, mind you. He's not, he's not just tucking in behind saying, I'm going to stay right on your tail. She's going. When she went by Weldon, we went on board with Weldon, you can hear him lifting. Some people are picking up pushes in the corners. Obviously, she is not. She's maintaining her speed. Other people are dropping off. And as I indicated, the uh, front pack now coming up on some of the slower traffic to put laps on them. Justin Wilson goes a lap down quickly, so does Sarah Fisher. So what are we looking for in terms of first pit stops, guys? Lap 55 is what I show at the moment is when, if you're stretching, and they could certainly stop prior to that. The window is already open. So if you were to have a caution now, everyone would dive on pit road. Or if you had a really, really bad handling issue, you could pit now and take a risk that it'll stay green and fix it early. Well, well, that may not be a risk because if your handling is going away and you're off the pace by a half a second, uh, you know, lap after lap, it's like, hey, guys, get me in and fix my car and make it better. Well, then, getting to trying to get to the inside of Elio Castro Nevis, Panther Racing, for which uh, Weldon is racing, has five wins here at Texas with drivers Scott Goodyear, Sam Hornis Jr., and Thomas Schechter. Jack? Fellas, one thing I want you to watch when we come down on the pit road is take a look at practice last night. The pit road area is so bumpy. You see Rafi Matos, his car bumping. There is no way you can go. Ryan Briscoe, after a pit stop last night, you can see the way it starts to launch the car. That's something that all these drivers are going to have to really be aware of, especially under green fly conditions. We should be seeing pits, as John said, anytime. Been green all the way so far as Danica Patrick continues to move forward. She is coming up on Scott Dixon for fourth position. And what makes that so challenging that Jack talked about is those bumps coming out of pit road. You've come in, you've put cold tires on, you're under green conditions. You can't give up any distance as you're coming out of that pit road. Remember those goal posts. You cover that track, the track in less than a second. Now here's Justin Wilson. Remember, he did lose a lap here, and so he has had enough of the tires, apparently, and he's going to get fresh firehawks and a tank full of ethanol. Well, he was losing a lot of speed. We saw his lap speed dropping and dropping, and Robbie, this is just what you talked about. If it drops to the point where you've got to get a change, they can change tire pressures, they can change front wing, they can definitely change a car quickly during a pit stop because he was in trouble. Yeah, and, and it comes from the, the pit boss, the guy who's running that tragedy. Look at man, Danica. You just momentum. got it. <laughs> Mo momentum for yeah. sure. Man, Welcome man. back. Yeah. Welcome back. She is now in fourth position and is able to pass on the high side and the low side and everywhere on the racetrack. Man. But anyhow, when you have a guy that's really getting slow out on the racetrack, you got the pit boss that's got to say, hey, we'll get to you. Just keep giving me everything you can. And he's just kind of weighing out the speeds of the whole field and says, okay. We just heard from uh, probably the either the spotter or whoever from from the stand of Danica's car. Fantastic job, and that's for sure. All the way up to P4. And they're looking, 
Yellow. 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 And that is why you don't ever want to pit until the end of your window. <laughs> As Justin <laughs> Wilson just did. So it always the rule of thumb, wait till the last moment. Yep. Because pitting under yellow is a enormous advantage. And they'll all get to do it except for those who got on pit road early. Yellow comes out on lap number 46 of 228. So our first, first opportunity to take a breather with Ryan Briscoe in first. Will Power in second, and Danica Patrick was closing in on third place Dario Franchitti when the caution came out. When we do, then we may have a crossover with a car in front of us, and be very careful. I will keep you involved. That's Sydney Marcus. And that was Ziggy that came on earlier. And when we said he was saying fantastic job, that was coming from Ziggy from the pit stand. Pits are going to be opening up here. The no. first pit stop that you do is always the fastest. Pits are open. Pit this lap. Pit this lap. Because the fuel flow is higher. There's more fuel in the tank. So this is when you're a tire changer. This is the one that pays the money yep. because it's harder to beat the fuel on the first stop than it is later in the race. A little bit of pressure. And, and don't think when these drivers hit to pet lane like they are right now, this is when they relax. Yeah, but why are they not right on the back of Briscoe? Because they're sleeping. Come on. That's why. <laughs> Down they're to Robbie. Sleeping. Well, the number seven car of Danica Patrick in fourth. She started in eighth place, and she is really not talking about anything while she's out there on the track. Ziggy mentioned, watch out for the crossover. Alex Tagliani is just in front of her. He is in the 15th position, so Alex is going to be pulling in. Liddy, it's going to be a close call here. See Ryan Briscoe on the top there. He is adding front wing. Two of his wins have been on 1.5-mile ovals. He's out. Will Power below him, who pulls out as we speak for about 25 laps, has been complaining of massive understeer. Briscoe and Will both out of the pits, Bob. Wow, look at Ryan Briscoe lost four spots. Yeah. What? Danica gained one. She uh, had a less than eight second pit stop. But definitely the common denominator there as we saw all the front tire changers going for that adjustment of front wing. Ziggy Harkis giving a rah-rah <laughs> on Danica's crew. But they all are putting more front wing in because the front is washing up the racetrack. It's pushing up the racetrack. And I should say Alex Lloyd just left the pits now. Had a big problem. Mm. Tough break for Alex Lloyd. Stay with us here on Versus. Back at Texas Motor Speedway for the Firestone 550 for the IZOD IndyCar Series. Under our first caution, the leader of the race is Dario Franchitti now. Ryan Briscoe had led all laps prior to the green flag, but had problems in the pit area. Apparently pulled into his uh, pit box crooked, and the uh, crew had a little bit of difficulty, so he is now back to the fifth position. But let's remember, we got the 24 degrees of banking here. And even if these drivers, coming back to all those points you showed us on this car, this infinite amount of changes and subtleties you can have on these race car, is if you don't have a perfect race car, you can still be in that lead pack. You can still tune it and drive hard and get back up there. As Jan pointed out, Alex Lloyd had major problems on pit lane. And he has dropped to 21st position, the last car on the lead lap. Oh actually came to a stop before mm. well they had the, that was very quick work on getting the quick lift and getting him close enough but he's still not close enough at this point where you can get the fuel hose connected people are already leaving at this stage wow and and it's thank a, goodness it's under yellow and it's a tough position for a driver i mean he he was just trying to get into his box as quick as he could he locked up that right front and hit that stack of tires and you, you know you got to be aggressive but look what if you're too aggressive getting trying to get that extra second and that happens it can put you all the way to the back. Tough break. Now Danica Patrick was definitely moving on up. First she took it to EJ Viso on the low side of the racetrack. Then low side of the racetrack with Marco Andretti. Actually she fought back and forth high and low. Finally took him on the low side. Then See you later, former winner Dan Weldon. Goes to the bottom here. Then, well, I could pass high and I could pass low. Go to the outside A Scott Dixon. Still kept that momentum, worked her way up. We saw her get by Lloyd and get right to the back of Dario Franchitti before those stops. And for a race driver, when your race car is doing that, it is a lot of fun, guys. The Eyes on IndyCar Series continues Sunday, June 20th with the Iowa Corn Indy 250 on Versus. 
Dario Franchitti looking to go undefeated at Iowa. He hasn't won every race there, but he's won every race that he's competed in there. Survival of the fastest, the Iowa Corn 250, Sunday, June 20th, 130 Eastern, right here on Versus. The green flag comes out, and we are back to racing once again. And let's see what Danica can do here. She's in third spot there on the racetrack. She's looking to go around Will Power. And right, right to the top side she goes. And anytime you do that after you've, you've been in for a pit stop, that just shows you the confidence that she's having in that race car. Isn't making any headway up there. In fact, almost loses his spot to Scott Dixon and still is under fire. Now wow. watch Ryan Briscoe. Ryan Briscoe certainly looked like he had the fastest car before that pit stop. And now he has to work his way through traffic, something he hasn't had to do before. And this, this is great to see this jockeying back and forth. But remember, <laughs> look at that, man. <laughs> is when this is really important is the last, you know, 50 laps of this race after the last stop. So right now, you know, there still is posture and figuring out where your strengths and weaknesses are, what you need to tune on your car for your next pit stop. Look how there close is those no guys question are. that Ryan Briscoe dodged a bullet on pit road when he pulled in wrong. In fact, during that caution after he pulled back out, he called his boss on the radio and said to Roger Penske, thanks so much for keeping me in the learning room. Danica Patrick continues to work the high side, guys. I gotta tell you, I'm starting to look at the tires here. I think the tires are gonna go one stint and only one stint. We may see guys pitting earlier than the pit window will require. Let's check in with Robbie Floyd. I'm down in the Danica Patrick pit, and of course you've heard Ziggy over the radio just a minute ago, but Marv Treach is in her ear trying to pump her up, saying she's got a good car, telling her, letting her know where the other cars are around her, but boy, the. The crew here in the number seven camp, the GoDaddy car, they have a smile on their faces. They know they have a fast car and a happy Danica, and that's a good thing oh, here in Texas. Oh, looks like we have a car in the wall. Sato is in the wall. Takuma Sato driving the Lotus-powered car, the Lotus-sponsored car, I should say. Hits the outside wall and then comes across the track, scrapes the inside wall, and Brian Howard is saying, slow down, we've got a problem. Well, this is the first time that uh, Takuma has really seen a high bank super speedway oval. And, and I asked him today right before the driver's meeting, I'm like, what do you think of this place? Crazy. Unfortunately, <laughs> he's not going to leave here thinking it was a lot of fun. Roger Yasukawa, ex-driver. Well, I shouldn't say ex-driver, current driver. His spotter. He's just not driving right now, is the spotter for Takuma. Well, that car went a long way from when it contacted the wall to where it stopped. Takuma was battling for a fourth place in the oval race at Kansas earlier this year and had a similar fate. And you can see the rear wing of that car is in the middle of the racetrack. And Tuma, Takuma says that he's okay. Let's hope that is the case. All right, let's take a look, see if we can find out what happened. High side of the racetrack. And this is where the bumps are, right in there, right where the sparks oh, are. Some, something broke on the car, I think. Yeah, it just yeah. went right. When you see sparks continuous as opposed to just bumping, something let down, let the right rear of the car down. Now, at this point, when, you, when you knock one of the corners off, that knocks off the brake line, and you don't have brakes, and yeah. you're going for a long coast. And you can see he was trying to turn the wheel to the right with that <laughs> Just one tire. Going. But what there is is there's bumps right in the middle of turn one and two. That's where the tunnel is into the racetrack. So when we first saw those sparks, that's when the car loaded up, hit those bumps. And the further you are up on the racetrack, the higher you are in that groove, the worse the bumps are, according to the drivers, as this track kind of, you know, matures. So Takuma is out of the car under his own power and will be checked over at the infield care center. Meanwhile, it's Franchini, Power, and Danica Patrick. Here are the push to passes remaining for Will and for Danica. Remember, they started with 20. And they're of 12 seconds duration. And you don't want those overtake buttons, push to pass buttons. You don't want to just always use them to pass people. You want to keep them at the end of the race in case you need to defend your position as well. Dario Franchitti, the leader of this race. This is the fourth race at Texas that Dario has led in seven starts.
under caution for the second time here at Texas and you can see these yellow lights there on uh, the poles along the front stretch here at Texas Motor Speedway a brand new innovation uh, they stretch 3,750 feet from turn four to turn one incorporating 168 LED light bars and 5,544 LED lights just to keep the folks here at Texas abreast of what is going on on the racetrack. Lindy? And Ryan hunter Ray came in, and he, they've just been fighting these same speed issues. He says they've had them at Kansas and Indy. It's basically an exercise in engineering. He's not really pleased right now. And also, they've been struggling with all weekend radio problems. And at the beginning of this race, even his spotter upstairs, they were trying to switch things in and out, Bob, to see if they could get any help with that at all. All right, we'll keep an eye on... Ryan Hunter Ray. Let's go down now to Jack Aroot, who is in the IZOD Performance Pit Sitter. Jack? Guys, down here in the IZOD Performance Pit, you know, we always <laughs> talk about pulling G's, especially in a high bank track like Texas. Well, I did a little research and found out that a guy's head or a gal's head weighs between eight and nine pounds. So what I did is I went to the bowling alley and we're going to try and approximate what it feels like on your head. My friend Victor Williams here. Okay, so this is going to be one and a half G's. He's going to add another one. Now I'm pulling three G's. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't <laughs> want to have to do this for two hours. <laughs> I'm trying to think to go, where, where do we take that, Jack? Yeah, I, oh, I, man. Yeah, I'm speechless. <laughs> I, I just. <laughs> On June 20th. World I, Extreme Cage Fighting returns live on Versus, and maybe that's what you get, you get into, Jack, with your helmets. Hard-hitting former champ Jamie Varner looks to fight back to the top, but first he'll have to down undefeated contender Kamal Shalaroos. Varner Shalaroos World Extreme Cage Fighting, live June 20th at 9 o'clock Eastern, only on Versus. Here's Robbie Floyd with Takuma Sato. Well, it's good to see you in the out of the infield medical center so quickly. Uh, what happened? Uh, actually, something failure. The, the car fell straight into the wall. I couldn't stare. So with a, with a little uh, shock, uh, the bumps and uh, it's something must have failed and broken. You're in 19th place at the time. What was your impression of this track, the, the few laps you had on it tonight? It was honestly impressive. At the start, in the beginning of the race, I really enjoyed it. It's such exciting and a really great facility to go side by side and uh, I was really happy with. But then uh, starting to uh, struggle the balance a big time, so I was falling apart and uh, I have to wait until first stop. Limited practice time only yesterday in the car on the track. How much has it changed from midday or morning yesterday to right now? It was a significant difference. There a lot more grip than the yesterday, the, the daylight landing time. I think now it's a lot cooler and, and uh, increased the grip, so uh, I think the car is going too faster. People were wondering if you could run side by side. We haven't had this aero package this year. Were you starting to get that feel of what it's like running two and three right here in Texas? It's okay as long as uh, keeping a good balance. Uh, you can go too wide and uh, always going to the too wide. And it's a long time as well. And uh, it seems to be working everything okay. It's just a question of the, how the balance you have. Unfortunately, at the first, uh, first stint, most of the guys having a problem too on the, on the balance. Thanks, Taku. I'm glad you're safe. Thank you. Takuma says it was a failure on the car, and we would agree with that. Rafi Almato started 23rd, currently 11th. He has gained the most positions of any other driver at 12th. Now, we said in the pre-race show, but I think it's worth repeating, both of the uh, DeFerrin Dragon cars were crashed in the Indianapolis 500. The team worked 463, was it, man hours to get this one car ready for Rafa. Which was a 12-hour day followed by a 17-hour day on Tuesday, a 17-hour day on Wednesday, throw it in the truck, following what was nearly 17 consecutive days of hard work in the heat of Indianapolis. So it's safe to say it's not just the drivers that love this game. <laughs> exactly. It's the guys that are committed to putting the cars back together, keeping them together, and keeping them running fast. Dan Weldon currently running in ninth position in the National Guard car. Dan Weldon has led more laps here than any other active driver, and he has six top ten finishes in ten starts. Well, I think what we heard from Sato with regards to, he said it feels like there's more grip in that racetrack. 
All that's going to do for us right now with watches is you're just going to see more guys up on the high side of the racetrack and on the low side of the racetrack. Thomas Schechter is the one who has led more laps here than any other driver. I will correct that as Justin Wilson, who has had problems from almost the start of the race, was in and now out with the top off of ethanol. And, and there was nothing to lose for him because he's already green. at the back of the pack. Yep. Okay, let's see what happens here as we go green. Boy, they line up two abreast, and Danica Patrick is kind of boxed in there. Yeah, Briscoe had a jump on the outside of her. Danica kind of got boxed behind Will. Boy, Frankini has just taken off and left, left this pack to fight amongst themselves. Yeah, you know, Dar you know, if you're at the end of the front of this pack, you, you always want to gap yourself however you can. But you want to lose, leave your special stuff for the end of the race. You don't want people to figure out your strategy this early. So when you come to that last restart, you know what to do. So don't, you don't want to give it up too early. Danica's still in a battle for third position with Ryan Briscoe on board with Ryan. He just went to a higher gear because he's in the draft. She just used a push uh, on the overtake assist. <laughs> we knew where we were going with that. Overtake, push the pass, yep. Now so, Briscoe gets the advantage. So she used it in a defensive mode, but Briscoe still on the high side, had the run and got it done. Yeah, but look at Dan Weldon. Talk about momentum, wow. look, he's on it. Weldon just had to dump the throttle there because Kanan got checked up. Look at on the outside of Weldon. Five. Oh, outside. man! <laughs> Elio. Outside. I'm just going to hand you a popsicle, Dan. Here I am. Here comes Schechter in the 24 car. Yeah, look out for him on the high side. He's not afraid to put up there. <laughs> and he is the driver who has led the most laps here of any active driver. These cars are much better. We talked about those over one trillion possibilities for a setup, and these engineers have made changes at the first stop, and a lot of these cars are much better than they were. And we, and we talk about Thomas Schechter leading the laps. What he wanted to do, Jan, in that practice last night, he was struggling in traffic to run flat in turns three and four. He said, guys, the key to this race is to run flat all day in traffic, if you can. And he was having to give too much up in turns three and four, so that's what I know he's been adjusting for. Robbie, the other thing that he was concerned about is the bumps all the way around the racetrack. The, the concern was unlike other drivers. When I talked to him about it, he said, I really don't think the bumps have changed at all. And I said, what about on the high side? And he said, I like the high side. Bumpy or not, that's where I want to be tomorrow night. Yeah, that's, that's Thomas. Well, the 9 and the 11. Dixon and Kanan continue to battle wheel to wheel. They have had some very close calls out there on the mile and a half high banks of Texas. The side-by-side -side battling continues at Texas Motor Speedway. It's the Firestone 550 here on Versus. The top five, Frankini, Power, Briscoe, Patrick, and Dixon. And now let's get down to Robbie Floyd. I want you to look at this, Bob. A cut tire for Mario Marias. He lost seven spots because he had to pull it in. One of the Newman Haas guys spotted it. But actually, when Takuma Sato crashed, Mario Marias, his own teammate, ran over debris, cut the tire, lost seven spots in the process. Went from 13th to 20th. Hasn't said much about the car. I think he's, he was happy with it, but he's not happy with that cut tire. Had to go with the freshing. He's back out on the track in 20th. But the good news from that is they caught the tire that it had a puncture in it and brought him in before he ended up in the fence as well. And of yep. course, all these cars have tire pressure sensors on all sets of tires on the wheels. And so there is an alarm on the dash as well as alarms on pit road that monitor all the time the tire pressures for that very reason. You really need at these kind of speeds to know even if you've lost a few PSI, that can be really dangerous. There's Alex Lloyd racing on the high side of uh Ryan Hunter Ray, but just ahead is the uh, 36 car of Bertrand Baguette. Let's give a shout out to him. He has gained 10 positions since the drop of the green flag. He started in 22nd position and he is now up to 10th. And this is only his third oval start. Bertrand Baguette there in the yellow and white. Rafa Matos battling alongside him. And also side by side racing. 
Look at that, the Penske cars, that's Briscoe, the one following, we're on board right now with Briscoe. He just kind of washed up the racetrack on the high side a little bit. Saw Will Power do that earlier. Here comes Dixon on the outside of Danica. Well, obviously the aerodynamic changes that they've made for the series last year that we didn't have here at Kentucky has absolutely allowed these guys to suck up on each other. Look at this, Danica, look at the run she has. Gets a wiggle. See? Ooh. Oh, that's because the, as soon as you get into that gap, the white line signifies the change in the banking. And if you just get on that white line in the banking section, it will definitely torque the car around. And if you do it too many times, one time you're not going to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> Danica is running in fifth position, but all five cars, the top five, running within seven tenths of a second. And you can see Dixon has used five and so has Danica. Well, again, I was saying earlier about some of the aerodynamic changes that the, the series instituted, the league instituted last year at Kentucky absolutely helped the competition and the side-by-side -side action we saw the end of last year. And that is definitely the case here. Thomas Schechter is running in ninth position. He's having a good race. He was the pole sitter here in 2002, three, and five. Jack? And Bob, I've been watching and analyzing Thomas Schechter as compared to Dario Franchitti. Now, Schechter has been consistently running about two to three miles an hour faster than Franchitti when he's out in the clear. I think what Schechter's doing right now is just being a with a lot of patience and maturity. Something Robbie Floyd, we have not seen from him in the past. Let's check in with Robbie now. Zig, what are you telling Danica? Just tell him to look after the tires, try and stay with it. She's uh, car still pretty good. Uh, she's just working it. We just want to still got a long way to go, so we just want to save the tires, work the car. What's she been saying to you? She's pretty happy right now. It's not saying a lot. That's always a good thing when she doesn't say a lot, so that's, we're happy. Silence is golden, guys. Ziggy's a veteran of Indy car racing, has been around this sport a long time. Now calling the shots for Danica Patrick. It's Franchitti, Power, Briscoe, Dixon, and Patrick with 87 of 228 laps completed at Texas. Dario Franchitti is doing what he did most of the day at Indianapolis last Sunday. He has the rest of the field in his rearview mirrors. He is leading here at Texas Motor Speedway in the Firestone 550. He has a two-tenths of a second, or you can see the interval there from the onboard camera. Back to Will Power running third, right, rather second, Briscoe third, then Dixon, and Danica Patrick. Now the question is, if we think back to Indianapolis, he had a low downforce setup. And if he was out front, he was good. But if he got back in traffic and didn't have as much downforce on that car, it made it where he'd fight it a little bit. If that happens here, you know, is he is he going that same direction here, Jan? Uh, the setups are so totally different that I doubt that's the case. But there is a trade-off to downforce, drag, speed. He did say he was one of the drivers that wanted to add downforce after last night's practice. But we said a lot, Every, of, a lot of people. I was going to say that was pretty much everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go through the field here. Our fire thrown through the field. Dario Franchini currently running in fifth position. Was on the pole here last year and in 2004. His best finish, however, was fourth in 2004. Now for Will Power, I talked to him yesterday. He said after all the miles he did in Indianapolis that his confidence has skyrocketed on the ovals. He feels much more comfortable. And he is in a battle with his teammate, Ryan Briscoe. And Briscoe, you know, you just said what a good job Will Power's doing. I think this guy right here last year was the class of the field on these super speedways. And even though he came up short in Homestead of the championship and finishing second, he had a brilliant drive at Homestead. Scott Dixon is the only target Chip Ganassi driver to win here at Texas Motor Speedway. Has led 121 laps total at this facility. However, he has not led tonight. Danica Patrick's kind of fallen back uh, from the, those four and now finds herself about 2.2 seconds behind. I think that's a case that her first initial setup was the best of the group. When they all fell off, she went to the front. They're going to have to keep tuning 
and of course her teammate, Tony Kanaan, team leader when it comes to setting up these cars, and they obviously have a good setup this evening. This coming Wednesday night at Eldora Speedway, owned of course by Tony Stewart. We'll get to that later as we have Simona Di Silvestro against the Safer Barrier. A lot of flash and flame coming out of there. And those flames are usually caused by oil. But look and at how much is up on the right yeah, front. Oh, there. yeah, this is. Uh, That's not good. A little more serious than an oil fire, I'm afraid. Let's get, uh, get the fire. Wow. Jeez, we got to get her out of there, but quick. Come on, come on. Having a little bit of difficulty doing so. Go get let's, her out, let's get her get, out. Let's get the flames. Uh, retarded here, shall we? Man. There's an extinguisher bottle. Come on, get it on there. Having just all kinds of difficulty getting her out of the race car. You need to get the head restraint out, and they were trying to do so, but it was binding, and it, it is very difficult to get out of these cars. Obviously, the team is livid. Yeah. Hmm. But, but there she is, she's out, so that's great. Yeah, of course, the, uh, the driver's suits protect in flames to a certain degree. But that was a major, major fire. I haven't seen a fire in an Indy car like that in quite a while. I was expecting, and I, I said sort of nonchalantly, well, yeah. that's usually from a gearbox or from and an then, oil yeah. cooler, it catches fire, mm -hmm. and then by the time it comes to a stop, it just goes yeah. out by itself. You got the, the hot headers, it explodes, right. the oil gets on there, and it's kind of a, a flash fire. Well, what it did was it caught the bodywork on fire, and mm -hmm. then, of course, it grew instead of just dissipating. See, the head restraint is still intact. And there's two clips that you have to undo and lift that out. And your head is almost a force fit in there because you saw Jack with the bowling balls talking about that kind of G-force. You actually, it's a press fit for the helmet. Well, you've got to get that head restraint out of there to make easy exit. Eventually, they just forget it, try to turn her sideways, and you can see, yank her out of the yeah. car. Yeah, which is painful. Yes. I mean, that's a, that's a small gap to do it, but you know, they had to get her out of there. And like you say, to get those clips off of there, that wasn't the thought process, it was just to get her out. Well, the ambulance will take her to the infield care center as well. Let's hope that she has uh, suffered no major burns. It was obvious since she walked away that maybe no broken bones, but let's hope that the driver's for, suit did protect her. For the rookie of the year for the 500, that's, that's, right. not, that's yep. not what you want a week later. Finished in 14th at the Indianapolis mm -hmm. Motor Speedway last Sunday, winning Chase Rookie of the Year on and, and absolutely loved her experience there. She loved the challenge of the racetrack. She loved all the pit stops and the whole gang, the whole game of what the Indy 500 is. A lot of debris on the racetrack. That will delay uh, us getting back to racing here for a few minutes. And we will be seeing more pit stops here in just a moment. As they pass by the Wrecked uh, and burned. All right, when you get down, you're going to come around with Silvestro. Remember, he's the only red target fire suit tonight. Come around, him. Sounds like Barry wants to around to Frank Keaty. Five, four, three, two, one. Everyone in, at least the top three. However, we see Ryan Hunter Ray not able Danica's to get it. Danica's out. Clear. Great job. Dario's the first one out, followed by. Power. <laughs> Danica and Dixon had a battle there off pit road. Uh, and look at Ryan Hunter Ray. Ryan Hunter Ray was moving up nicely. We heard him say that he was having trouble, but he had moved up to 11th position. But this this pit stop is going to set him back. He's not going to lose a lap, but he's going to go to the, yep. the, the tail end of the pack. And we have 19 cars on the lead lap. Fired him back up. Stay out there until I tell you to come in. Stay out there until I tell you to come in. I couldn't see, man. I couldn't, I couldn't find the pit. It's all right. It's all right. Just get our heads back here and just try to control this loss. Don't come in until I tell you to. So, uh, 
Obviously, Hunter Ray's got to come back in again because maybe they didn't get all the fuel in. Let's watch his... Uh, it sounds as though they didn't get any fuel just by yeah. the radio communications. And see, he's looking for it, he's looking for it, then locks it up. You just heard him say, I couldn't see. I couldn't see the pit. And let's and say, see, no, no, no fuel. No fuel at this fuel. point, but they go for the... Now, here's, here's why you can't see. Because your, your view is blocked with the car ahead, and oh! And remember, we're, we're on the onboard camera. Which is a little higher. His, we're higher, but remember, he probably, his tear off has probably got some grease on it. He hasn't ripped it off. Usually, you rip that off when you, when you leave the pit. Oh. There's the, the vent man standing there waiting to plug in, waiting to plug in. Now the nose of the car, or at least a piece of the car, certainly contacted lightly the wall there, so they may need to check the front of that to be sure everything's okay yeah. as well. I mean, at this point for him just to come back in and get fuel, it doesn't matter because they were at the back of the pack anyhow, so when the pits reopen, they'll come in, top off, and go. So the battered car of Simona Di Silvestro is on the hook, and we're cleaning up the accident that has caused this caution flag here at Texas Motor Speedway. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. Simona Di Silvestro has been taken to the infield care center, but here in the IZOT Pit Performance Center, I wanted to analyze that pit stop by Ryan Hunter Ray. I want to draw attention to this area here where they have the signboard, but more importantly, down in this area here when we go to take a look at it, because watch from the onboard. Now let's roll it for just a second. Ryan Hunter Ray's trying to find his pit. He goes around Marco Andretti, and all of a sudden, he starts to turn in, and it's too late. Why is it going to be too late? He might have been able to do what Ryan Briscoe did, but stop it right here. Look what stands right in his way, a tire. He wasn't able to get away with it the way Ryan Briscoe did. It got him in crossways, and it cost him a lot of time that he had made up on the racetrack. Fellas? In fact, it drops him back to 19th position, and there are now 21 cars on the lead lap. Well, the most epic race ever, the Tour de France begins July 3rd, only on Versus. For 21 days, the world's best cyclists will take on the rolling plains, soul-shaking cobbles, and grueling mountains of France. The most epic race ever, the Tour de France, July 3rd, 1130 Eastern, only on versus Robbie and I love the hockey games and Jan loves the Tour de France. Yes, I do. <laughs> All cycling. This year they're adding the cobbles. They didn't have cobblestones last year. So some of the riders did some of the one day classics to ride across the cobbles to get tuned up just for the Tour de France. That's going to be a good element. How about that? And the Flyers tied it up last <laughs> night. That's great, Jan. But the Flyers tied it up, Jan, yep. uh, last two, night two, too. In two, overtime, two. yep. All right, well, the crash scene looks a little better than it did. As we go on board with the leader of the race, Dario Franchitti. Back in 1997, Ari Leyendijk won the Indianapolis 500 and then Texas. In 2008, Scott Dixon did the double. Elio did it last year. Can Franchitti do it in 2010? He has led 59 laps so far tonight, and he is currently in the lead over Will Power and Ryan Briscoe. And there is Simona's car, the uh, IndyCar series officials are looking it over and I'm sure this will be an extensive examination as we go along. Meanwhile, the uh, sweepers and the, even the jet dryer now on the racetrack making sure the debris is blown off the track so we can go back to racing. And it's not just about getting the debris off the racetrack, it's about pit in and pit out. Mm -hmm. Lindy, you got more? Well, I'm here with Clive Howe. Will Power's about to come in. Clive, does he have something stuck under his car? Hang on, let me yeah, let him talk to Will for a second. It appeared Will Power, he thought he had some debris stuck under his car, and now Will thinks that possibly it's gone. He's busy, so we're just going to let him work right here. But the crew okay, is the set up for Will to come in. Nice come up here. We're going to take our time and make sure it's right here. Three, two, one.
and you heard Clive okay, say... Look looking, looking, we're checking it out. Take it easy, take it easy. Nice and easy. You, you want to come in and make sure nothing's wrong. You know, you could... It could ruin your race, but you're under yellow, and now's the time to say, hey, get it right. If we can fix it, because if you're at the back of the pack, you can get to the front with a good race car. So this... This is the right approach. Now these cars run low, and if there's debris on the racetrack that is larger than the ride height, it'll just roll underneath there and just put a big old gouge underneath the car. I'll split up, I'll split up. Okay. And Jan, you saw they put a little patch down there on the under tray. I want to point out too that it was a few years ago, a similar situation with Jill DeFerrin driving for Roger Penske. During a yellow flag, they thought they had some problems, came in, take a look at, took a look at stuff, went to the back of the pack. By the end of the race, he was in victory lane. Still waiting on word uh, on the condition of Simona Di Silvestro involved in a fiery crash here at Texas Motor Speedway. Bob Jenkins, Jan Bigas, Robbie Buell, Jack Aroot, Robbie Floyd, and Lindy Thaxton back at Texas Motor Speedway for the Firestone 550. We are within four laps of the halfway point and still under caution because of the accident involving Simone Di Silvestro. And now there's a question as to whether Will Power is going to have a, uh, a good race car when things get going again. Ryan Hunter Ray makes a return visit to pit lane. And we're looking at his fueler, so he got in there where they can get fuel in and all the way. Robbie, this, Robbie, this makes a lot of sense. When you're at the back of the pack, why not pack in the fuel? That's what he was doing before. So as you look underneath the car of Will Power, let's see. Well, you really can see that there's some debris under there or something, isn't there, guys? It's got a big scar in the carbon fiber. We could see when we were up there with Clive Howe just how intense that moment was. And Will thought something was in there, and there sure was somebody's wishbone in the side pot of his car. So obviously he had to come in. They removed that. And Bob also, when he was in, they did a half turn of front wing on his car. And now he's back out. And we'll see what he can do at this point. But Lindy, just as we went to break, we overheard from your camera them saying, we're not sure the tape job will hold. So certainly with that gash, that of course would be from Simona de Silvestro's crash. He went across some debris, so he hasn't been at speed yet, but that's not good for aerodynamics. He has dropped back to the 18th position. There are 21 cars on the lead lap. And you talk about tape job, when we panned in on his car, there was something hanging down. I mean, tape job or not, there was something that was definitely still hanging down on that thing. Man. Let's go back to racing, shall we? It's Dario Franchitti out in front of Briscoe, Dixon, Patrick, and Tony Canon. And Dario didn't get the gap that he had that time before. Briscoe was ready for that. Will Power, of course, is the points leader going into this race. And Lindy pointed out in our pre-race show that we may have a change at the top, and that's very possible. But we've still got half a race to go as we ride on board with Marco Andretti with Thomas Schechter right beside him. What a difference between one car that lifts and another that doesn't. As soon as Marco lifted, <laughs> Schechter was through the corner. Marco's back in 10th position. And look at Danica once again showing some muscle here, battling for third. On board with TK. Love the sh there you heard TK oh, lift off the throttle. He had a big run Outside. coming by Danica. And he just right now he's happy. I'm just he's just gonna lift, stay right there, and just see what sorts out in front of him. Saw there just backing off the throttle. That's why he said still there. <laughs> because it's Weldon. That means don't unwind the wheel. Here yeah. comes Weldon. Yeah. Doesn't mean stay there. He's still He's there. there. <laughs> and when you hear clear, that means you can unwind out to the wall if you want. Wow. They've all come back together. That's what we like at Texas, boys. Fiso is on the bottom side of the racetrack. Weldon on the high side. And there the, we see uh, Elio Castro Nevis and Schechter. Schechter in the yellow and black car tonight. 
Well, that's what, when we were riding on board, they were on board with. There he is right there. And he likes the low side, too. Yeah. But the thing is, once you're in the queue and you, whoa, three oh, wide. No, 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 no. Remember I said Marco loves the high, that's, <laughs> he loves the high side of the racetrack. Man, he's got momentum. He's still going to carry that momentum. Checker looks strong. Here's Alex Lloyd, who has moved back up to 10th. He's battling for a top 10 position again. So Alex Lloyd making up from what we saw him falling back earlier. Nice run for him. Again, part of what, and that's just why the drivers love this racetrack, because if something does happen, you cycle back, and you've got a good car, you can race your way back up to the, to the front. Drivers love it, fans love it, we love it. You just really got to uh, commend Alex Lloyd for his performance in the Dale Coin car, finishing fourth in Indianapolis, having a problem with the bad pit stop earlier, but now battling for the 10th position. Lloyd and Schechter side by side. You and I were doing the Firestone Indy Light Series, Robbie, when Alex Lloyd just dominated blew away yeah. all the records. And, and, and for the minimal time that he's had an Indy car, he's been oh, 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 hello. Danica just teammates. Tony cannot. <laughs> <He's darn laughs> and, and look at Vizo go by. Bam! That, that took care of his moment. Marco goes by. That was Marco. Here comes well, the Lloyd. National Lloyd. Golf Car. Oh, and here comes Alex Lloyd. We we're just talking about him as well. Maybe we should hear what's going on on TK's radio. Well, he lost that <laughs> momentum. He got shot badly by his That's teammate. Right. Yeah, Outside. Here it is, coming into Yo, turn three. Man. Yeah. Mm. He was going to make a move on her, and she decided she might make a move on Dixon, and wow. He had to back out of it. Alex Lloyd going to the high side now, looking at Weldon. He is up to eight. Remember, Alex's. he was all the way at the back because of a pit miscue at that first stop. And when we started the show, I said he could be a dark horse. And for some reason, I meant to say Mitch Davis, of course, is his engineer on the engineering staff that has brought that setup. That he's so confident. He said, I'm going to tell Alex. Hey, one back right behind you. Still outside. That this is a setup that I won with with Jeff Ward, and you just stand on it, baby, there. and I'll take you to the front. And conveying that confidence to You're the driver there. is part of the game. And you start believing what your You're engineer or, or your technical director is telling you. That's the game, You're guys. There. That that camaraderie. Still, <laughs> still there. there. Still outside, there. Alex Lloyd, outside. Rubbing on you, Alex outside. Lloyd. I know it's Alex. Okay, <laughs> come on. Still there. There. But that now, see, when you hear him saying still there and they're side by side, what that does is that allows these guys, TK and Schechter, to come right up behind them. So that's that's where it just creates great excitement in, in the action here. Robbie Floyd with more on Alex Lloyd. Well, I talked to Alex yesterday after that first practice. Remember, he had never raced here before, and he was sitting in the pit box during practice while Danica Patrick turned 50 laps around the place. I said, are you that good, or is the car that good? And he told me both. When I talked to Dale Coyne today earlier, he said, it's all about confidence, Robbie. We had a car that wasn't so good and turned into a fourth-place car at Indy. He brings that confidence here at Texas. Watch out for Alex Lloyd. Very good point, Robbie. Yeah. Oh, this is a great pack here. Ooh, oh, those lift. Little lift again. Now, can Alex take advantage That's of that? It. Yeah, help him. a little bit. <laughs> so this is this type of action is when you're in the heat of it and you're trying to work on somebody. After about 15 laps of it, you're saying, "Hey, can you give me a yellow out here? I need to catch my breath." <laughs> Elio going 214 miles an hour there oh, at yes. most, but Ryan Hunter Ray has the IZOD fastest lap of the race. It was on lap 117, but over 215 oh, miles an hour, and he is still on the move. And remember, he was the guy that said he wasn't really happy with his race car and the sheer speed of it. Well, wow. he's got the fastest awesome. lap. He had it there. He just passed. Why you were saying he had the fastest lap? He blew by four people. Bob. <laughs> yeah, did you see it? He dropped a gear, and yep. there was some checking up on the yep. high side. Yep. He just stayed on the bottom. Yeah. Alex Lloyd and Thomas Schechter are now in a battle for ninth. 
So he cleared Kanan, who he heard was lifting. And he's by Schechter, guys. But he had to give up his fight briefly for Weldon. Remember, he was side by side with Weldon. At the top of your screen, those numbers after the driver's name, number of pushes left in the Oh, oh, oh look Rush. at that split! Wow. I think he just clipped it. Did you guys see that? I think that was Bertrand Baguette yeah. that went yeah. right through the middle there and just clipped him. Elio is involved. Keep it high. Oh, yeah. there's there's Baguette who yeah. having a great great drive for for well, Eric Batchelor. And Elio oh, he's, is not happy with no, and they, Alex Burra. They both speak Portuguese. I was going to say, they can understand each other. Mario yeah. Marias. Oh. But for Bertrand Baguette to be actually driving that car back. Yes, it, it, that was yeah. that a miracle. For, for, that, for that quick snapshot we saw there going through, because it was, uh, you know, six inches another direction and that would have been a different story. Mario Marias, here is Bertrand Baguette. Yeah, coming in for repairs, they're gonna... He's there's gonna, a lot of damage. Yeah, the that, car that suspension's uh, yeah. cooked on the front and Elio with a stair back that was not, not a friendly one. Elio uh, doesn't show emotion like yeah. this very often, but he obviously was unhappy with Marias. And a damaged race car for Team Penske. It happened right here in front of the paying customers. And when Bertrand Baguette went through there, uh, there was a collective sigh of, ooh, watch it. Coming off of four, uh, and yeah. that's it. Elio had yeah. a, a head of steam, yeah. and Marias just kind of kept moving up the now racetrack. Watch, 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 watch. This. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is a case where we've heard so much tonight. Mm. And look at that splitting the gap. We've heard so much tonight. Outside, 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 still there. All right, if you don't have that call, if you don't know that and you unwind the wheel, that is what Castro yeah. Neves expected is that Marias would have known he was coming. But Castro Neves was, was coming with a head of steam. It's not as though he was totally up alongside. I mean, he was, get, was kind of getting there and holding it. But you hold your line when you come off. The spotter should have said, hey, you know, he's back there. He's at your right rear, at your right rear. Elio has made his way back to the pit stand. It's only the second DNF for Castro Nevis here at Texas. He was involved in a crash here in 2007 on the 197th lap. Today it occurs on 129th lap. Leaders will pit. Pit. Lap. pit off of four. 10 4 coming in. You are at a point here to where I don't think you would short fill. I think you want to take all the fuel because you're on an early part of a window. So it's basically get all the fuel and obviously stop straight. Yeah. And, and, but <laughs> and on the marks. But after this, they have one more stop. They do. There, there's going to be one more stop. That's it after this. Correct. Hey, Robbie, the one thing to watch, though, remember that uh, the 37 car, our buddy Ryan Hunter Ray, he spitted a little bit later and packed in fuel. Fuel flows at a certain rate. He shouldn't have to take so long on pit road. Five, as four, everybody else. three, two, one. Track position. Okay, nothing fancy here. Power stayed out. Dixon. Look Dixon at that picks up. Yeah, Dixon got in there. TK build up. Oh, oh Marco. Marco. Now Marco is the one. Is he still fired? Yeah, yeah he's Schechter. still fired. Schechter, they had, they had to quit looking out for him, too. Oh, and they can't get the fuel in, Jan. The fueler is going stretch. Yep, park too far from the pit wall and the refueler. Now they're getting uh, fuel in. Away he goes. But again, didn't lose a lap, so uh, he's... We're going to watch him come from we, the back uh, again. Watch right. him come from the back. Yep. 
Elio, first of all, what did you say to Mario Marias after that crash? I, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to speak that on TV, on public TV. Uh, certainly, um, something happened. Our car was very tough in the beginning of the race, but and then we're adjusting pretty well, taking it easy. It's only 130 laps. I mean, it's still 100 laps to go, so there's nothing I could do. I got a good run on him, and somehow he just kept going up, going up, and uh, I'm like, what? What are you doing? And uh, I'm the one. After that pit stop, certainly I did not have a radio, so I was always running outside to make sure that I have everything covered on the outside. But I'm sorry, but Mario, I mean, it wasn't the first time. Actually, he did that before in the beginning of it. Was I don't think he has a little bit of a that perception, but um, it's a shame because 132 laps. Well, I wasn't even. I was taking it easy, especially when you don't have a radio. In these conditions, is the worst thing. So, very upset, um, obviously, with the result. Uh, we want to finish in the points, and that's going to hurt on the championship. We've got to turn the page uh, and move on, but very disappointed. And unfortunately, now not a chance for a back-to-back -back win here at Texas. Robbie Floyd with Baguette. Robbie. Yeah, Bertrand, you started in 22nd. You moved up into the top 12, had a fast car, but unfortunately, you had a front-row seat to that accident. What was going on in front of you? I don't know, I saw two cars going in the wall in front of me. Then I tried to avoid it, but it goes so quick. I just go, I just saw the car coming on me. I tried to pass between the two, but I couldn't. So it's really a shame because the car was, was so good, so quick. I could move up, yeah. Wow, it was close, but didn't make it. A game of inches, you're seeing this go on in front of you. You still pinning it or are you having to try and bob and weave? It looked like you were still going straight, but were you on the gas? Yeah, no, I was braking, I was slowing down and but it goes so quick and the car just came on me and I couldn't do anything. I just tried to, to go between the two, but it was it was impossible. But as I say, the car was so quick. We deserved, again, a better results. We had a good car at Kansas. We had a good car at Indy. We had a good car here. Unfortunately, no good results yet, but it will come for sure. Unfortunately, the next time we'll see Bertrand is in Iowa. Bertrand out of the race and Schechter makes another pit stop and rolls back onto the racetrack. And that was because they couldn't get the fuel there, yep. I don't think. All right, let's take a look at the uh, race off pit road. There's Dario. And Dixon second followed very closely by Ryan Briscoe and then Danica Patrick. So that's the way they will line up when we go green once again from another caution flag here in Texas. We saw a fiery crash from Simona De Sylvester, who just walked out of the infield care center. What is the situation? I see your hand wrapped up. Yeah, I just burned my hand a little bit because of the fire. You know, the uh, car was a little bit loose, and, and, and I just lost it coming out of two. You know, it's a shame for the team because uh, we really improved the car uh, during the whole race. It was getting better. It was a little bit loose, but, uh, you know, it happens. I feel, I feel bad. Yeah, hand is a little bit burned because of the fire. Couldn't get out quickly enough, but I uh, feel okay and ready to go to the next race. You were brushing this off. I can't believe you're a rookie. The way that you communicate communicated with you know your whole crew what was it like for you being in that fire while everything was going on around you them trying to pull you out yeah it was pretty crazy you know the fire wasn't going away it was just getting worse and worse so it was just uh, a little bit scary but you know the guys did a good job of taking me out and uh, you know just pulled a little bit on the side part where it was on fire and burned my hand a little bit but we should be all right a little bit or uh, quite a little bit everything good for Iowa I hope you know I hope the blisters are gonna wait for, for Iowa if not we'll just have to drive with it <laughs> I can't believe she got out of that fiery crash guys and smile on her face and looking forward to the next race Wow here was the scene a few few minutes ago as they had difficulty getting Simona out of the race car but the only burn apparently was on her hand and she said because she put her hand on the side pod as you could clearly see they're trying to help them yep. get her out yep. okay well they were going green but they didn't now they're going to try it again and it is Alex Tagliani at the front green, of the field green, who green. did not pit Will Power, second, Franchitti, Dixon, and Briscoe as they charge off of corner number four to take the green. And Tag's got a great restart. Let's see what kind of speed he has. We know he had it in Indianapolis. Let's see what he's got right now at the front of this pack. But they haven't been quick here no. yet. And it's nice to get track position by not pitting, but I would expect he's going to get gobbled up. And look at this three-wide <laughs> gobble up. Uh, we mentioned in the qualifying show yesterday, change at uh, the fast racing team. Rob Edwards has been elevated to COO of that team. Jim Fruitberg had that position but resigned earlier in the week. Now 
Rizzo on board with Dario. Justin Wilson staying high. Wilson is a lap down. Apple. And Tanks holds on to the lead. Well, he's, he's doing a nice job of defending. He's not getting gobbled up as quickly as I expected. He will be lighter on fuel, so that's somewhat of an advantage, but he doesn't have the new tires. Look at Dixon. Look to the inside, but thought better of it. And now power drifts high on the racetrack. Yeah, we saw him do that earlier. He's done so that a few he, times. he must be comfortable just letting the car have its head, not try and bind it up and stay down. Just gonna let it float up there if that's where it wants to go. Keep the momentum that way. Longer distance, but momentum. Canons running ninth. Alex Lloyd beside him. Now in front of him. PJ e. Viso in the mix too. And Danica Patrick is ahead of it all that. Well, for the gangbuster kind of approach that Dixon and Power had with tags, now they've just settled into really being behind a pretty, pretty stout deal. And I'm very impressed by Tagliani. His engineer, Alan McDonald, I talked to him last night, said, you know, I, I'm going to be staying up late tonight because we just don't have the speed. Well, he must have really, he must have stayed up late enough to make a big change on that car. Danica passes Dario. Picks up fifth. Whoa! Dario lifts big time. You know, that just takes the air off the front of Dario's wings and up the track it goes. Jack? Danica Patrick wants to make hay early in a stint. What seems to happen, according to Ziggy Hargis, is when they get down to the second half of the fuel load, the car, in terms of handling, starts to go away. It's the first half where she is able to drive it high, low, and it's very comfortable in traffic. Now, as we're on board with Tony Kanan, you know that Kanan and Patrick are teammates, right? Mario Marias over on the right-hand side. <laughs> Michael Andretti is not at all happy with the move that Danica Patrick made on Tony Kanan. <laughs> Let's go to Robbie Floyd. I'm with Mario Marias, who was in that crash with Elio Castroneves. What happened from your perspective in that wreck? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have my spotter. My spotter didn't say he was outside, and he, he was just outside in my right rear. So when I saw it was in the wall, all right. Elio was saying that he didn't have communication, that maybe you didn't see things so good out there. You, you couldn't see him, could you? I was looking at the car in front of me, you know. I was pretty close to the car in front of me. And, you know, he's Elio Spasonado. He never, he never made any mistakes. So let's see. Some, someday he needs to make some mistakes as well, you know. Accidents happen, guys. Uh, two different stories from two different gentlemen. But the key word was there that he, I couldn't tell if he said he didn't hear or he wasn't told, but clearly, he was not told by a spotter that he had someone there. And, and when you don't know, you don't unwind the wheel on a super speedway coming off of a corner. That's just kind of etiquette. If you don't know for certain there's no one there, you can't go out to the wall. How about Ryan Hunter Ray? He is up to ninth spot. Remember him coming down pit road? Didn't come in and get field? He's got a good race car because he, he is does. right on the back of Alex Lloyd and going fast. He just didn't have anywhere to go, so he just had to lift out of it till he gets a gap. Well, the two Penske cars of Power and Briscoe are a wheel to wheel while Tagliani continues to lead this race. Tagliani at 210.6 and Power at 210.3 last lap. Watch this. Briscoe and Dixon. Oh, Ooh. I think they rubbed wheels, didn't they? Yeah, I don't think I can see Firestone, and I did before that. I think we, I think we rubbed the, the Firestone Firehawk right off the side. You Danica Patrick fans have something to be proud of tonight because she has been in the hunt all race long. And she's going, well, she's working on the high side of Dixon anyhow. <laughs> she's working on Dixon for the fourth position. There are the top five at Texas Motor Speedway. Just some great racing so far in the Firestone 550 at Texas Motor Speedway. On board there with Marco Andretti, you got a shot of Vitor Mira, who is currently running in ninth position. So hats off to Vitor. And now we're on board with Marco Andretti once again, running eighth. That's Alex Lloyd up ahead and also EJ Viso. Marco goes to the high three. side again. And you just heard him drop a gear. He had to get up on the high side there, probably lift and just drop a gear. 
Here's TK looking back on Matos and Schechter. Schechter right behind TK. Ooh, oh, we saw some flame. Anytime you see flame, that means it's a lift. lift. And you see Schechter's car kind of move a little bit up there on the high side. Just a little bit of movement of sliding around up there. He's on the bottom now. Here's Lindy. George Cloaks, the strategist for Ryan Hunter Ray, an up and down day for him. How have you managed to get him currently in 10th? Uh, every time we come in, we just, I mean, the car tarted off, not very good at all. And every time we come in, we just kept making adjustments. Now the thing's in pretty good shape here. Uh, it would be nice to get about five more cars here, and then we'd be really uh, looking real good. And I know he was having radio communication problems earlier. Is that better? Yeah, that's fixed, too. We've uh, changed radios up top there, so I think we're in pretty good shape that far as that goes, too. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Ryan Hunter Ray is actually faster than those up front. He's running 211, and Tagliani is running 210. And if you remember, you heard George say they just keep tuning on the car. So as this race goes along with pit stops, the guys can make the adjustments to where the track's going to be faster and faster and have a good race car. Briscoe and Power <laughs> still at it. And Tagliani's just looking back there going, you guys just stay side by side as long as you want. Coming into tonight, Tagliani had led 21 laps in his entire IZOD IndyCar career, and tonight he has led 29 and counting. I'm down here in the IZOD Performance Pit Center, and I've been analyzing Dario Franchitti. He was so fast early in the race. But then if you notice, his speed has dropped off considerably. Part of the issue has been the fact that he got mired down low in heavy traffic. The car didn't like being in that heavy traffic. And as you ride on board with Dario, Chip Ganassi said to me when he was pinned down low, he had to back out of the throttle. And this is all about momentum, isn't it? And as you pointed out, Robbie, when he's in clean air out front, everything's okay, but he is mired back in some heavy traffic right now. Yeah, and it's not just being about pinned down on the bottom, like Jack was saying, that's one part of it, but he's got cars in front of him in a lot of dirty air. Fiso and Ryan hunter Ray for seventh, and Ryan, I was gonna say, took it, but I'm not so sure. That's a that's a stout piece we're on board Ooh, with. Look how close they are. Yeah, he drew, <laughs> Fiso is. Making his job a little harder. Mario Romancini. A lap down in 19th position. Uh, the only two on the, not on the lead lap are Justin Wilson and Romancini. So we got 17 cars on the lead lap. And we as we just Outside. looked there on TK's helmet, the way that that bobbed up and down, did you see it? It said, it said get well. In this case, it's Nick Ford. Some people have the get well mics stickers on their cars. In this case, Nick Ford, of course, is his mechanic got burned at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, who's recovering for Tony Kanai. Down to Robbie. Alex Tagliani started in 20th place. Ran in the lead just a moment ago. His last pit stop was lap 101, is what Rob told me. His crew's coming in. Should be just full fuel and fire zones going on. No adjustments whatsoever. They're happy with this car. They've really moved up through the field. Need a quick stop here. The leader's making their way by. Out. Oh, oh the fuel, fuel hose is stuck. They sit it. And of course, a terrible stop. And I saw them. He went to leave, and they did not even come close to having that hose removed. And there is a new safety innovation that is not quite online yet that will prevent that in the future. And there is a probe, an electronic probe, that when the fuel probe is connected, you cannot put it into gear until the fuel probe is released. All of the cars have the sensors this weekend. So you can see that they're waiting for the fuel, but they sent him too soon. Well, they, they sent him on the motion of him pulling of the out. Jack. They sent him on the moment of the air jack, not on the fueler. Every single car here this weekend is using the fuel proximity sensor, as it's called, but it's not activated. They'll try it some more in Iowa. It'll come online and mandatory by Watkins Glen. Fellas, give credit to another safety innovation. Remember a number of years ago, helmets were mandated for all crew members. 
when that crew member hit the ground, the helmet kept him from going unconscious. And now Will, Will Power on his way. Yep, Will Power drops down onto the apron of the track, and he will relinquish his position up front to Ryan Briscoe. And Danica Patrick will fall into second spot. And let's not forget how challenging it is on pit in and pit out here. It's very bumpy as these cars challenge those so race cars coming clear. down onto the it's flat clear. off Come the bank. Right it's here. really Slow tough. Down. Don't go through the pit. Five, four, three, two, one. It's going to be a long fuel stop. And the reason it's... Rips up, rips up, rips up a little bit, rips up. You hold the brake. It's going to be a long fuel, long fuel, long fuel, long fuel. Long fuel. It's long fuel is because it'll be tough for him to make it to the end. He is definitely in before the pit window opens. He's going to need help, as will Tagliani. Yeah, by probably about three laps early of that pit window. It's Briscoe, Patrick, Andretti, Dixon, and Viso. And you will see everything on versus nonstop as we take a break from Texas Motor Speedway. 100 laps complete at the Firestone 550 at Texas Motor Speedway for the IZOD IndyCar Series. We're with you live on versus here. Ryan Briscoe leads Danica Patrick and Marco Andretti. We saw one of the crewmen for Alex Tagliani take a tumble there on pit lane. Robbie, uh, let's talk with him. Yeah, I'm with Phil McRobert, who's the fueler for Alex Tagliani. What happened from your perspective? Well, I'm not sure. I just ended up on the floor, but I'm okay, so that's all that matters. Just, I just put gas in this thing. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Now, I noticed they're changing the apparatus here. Was there damage to that one or just making sure that everything's all right for the last pit stop? It's just a precaution to make sure there is no problems. All right, Phil. It's a very tough job to have out here, guys. We know when fuel was spilt, but the crew was on it throwing water, and everything's well now, and they're changing the fueling nozzle. All right, good. There are the first two with Danica Patrick, just a matter of car lengths behind the leader of the race, and Alex Lloyd and Vitor Mira are having a good battle for the ninth position. Alex has that spot right now. But the ABC supply company car of AJ Foyt racing with Mira behind the wheel is trying to get around on the high side. And now the thing that we're going to have to watch for as guys are starting to make those pit stops is pit in and pit out laps. Coming out of the pits on cold tires, what can you do? And how much can you challenge it coming down off of turn three onto the flat and around that bumpy turn three, four section to the 60 mile an hour speed limit where it all begins along pit road. Well, certainly don't forget about Danica. She is in a perfect spot. As you see, Briscoe slides Ooh. up high, Whoa. and Danica's got the momentum. She's after the lead. She, she goes. Down into one, they go wheel to wheel. Briscoe just lost the front of that car and went up the racetrack and had to get out of the throttle. Is Danica gonna be, Danica gonna be able to take the lead? I don't think so. Guys, this is a special weekend for Danica Patrick. Her husband, Paul Hospenthal, celebrated his birthday last night. As the car started to get away, the GoDaddy car, she invited all of her friends over for cake and ice cream after that last practice session. I don't know. If she wins this thing, they better eat cake every race weekend. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I bet there's going to be a even bigger celebration if she should win. And Marco Andretti is looking strong. Also, he's in third after that performance at Indianapolis last week. Obviously, this team and this driver have things together once again. And, and he loves this racetrack. And just going back, he's not afraid to get that car up on the high side. So at the end of this race, we get in some traffic. He's going to go up top if he needs to. And they come up on some slower traffic now. This is when Danica needs to get right on the yeah. The rear attenuator of Briscoe, so if Casey gets checked up by any of his back markers, she can go. Sarah Fisher, now Mario Romancini, they're putting a lap on. Sarah Fisher's running 15th. Marco definitely got hung up back there, yep. Yep. trying to trying to make hay. Unfortunately, he lost some ground to second place spot of Danica. 
these cars have one pit stop left to get them to the end, and they're going to stay out as long as they possibly can, hoping for yellow. Here's Schechter on pit lane. He relinquishes his 14th position. He's given this car a good run. Great record here at Texas Motor Speedway. And again, Schechter filling in for, for Conway, who we know is watching. Yeah. Again, Mike, uh, well wishes from everybody here. Hit this lap. Sounded who like was Ziggy. That? Sounded that was like Ziggy to me. Yeah, that, that would Ziggy. be for Danica Patrick. So this is it. This is kind of make or break. Hustling it down, so down pit road and pit well, up. Let's see if Briscoe stopped the same lap. Come here, guys. He's going one more lap. Yep. And ready, third place in. Briscoe stays out. Clear out. Marco is away. He wants to bust it out, getting out of pit road. Cold tires, very bumpy. Here's Danica. On. And this is a happy driver and a happy car, guys. Look at Ziggy. He said no change. It's just tires, fuel. The waiting filled up, filled up. Got got you. Got you. Got again, this is a car I think they're happy with. A full load of fuel, is this a winning car? That's the big question. And now Ryan Briscoe, the leader, comes in. This is what Robbie was talking about, in and out laps on a bumpy pit lane. Four, three, two, one, shallow. Scott Dixon also on pit lane. And we won't know where it all sorts out until everybody gets back on the track and we see where the gaps are. Go, go! We'll have a very good idea good stop. when he comes off and look for Danica. Danica is here on the front stretch. He's got to get here up to comes. speed. There he is, just pulling out of pit now lane. Look how much ahead of steam she's got. She's going to go by him. Well, uh, maybe no. not. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got her tires oh, she up to temperature. Oh, here she this. comes. There she goes. Whoa. Yeah. Did she come up on him quickly or what? And away she goes to the lead. So we can say she had a, it's not the lead yet. There's a couple right. cars that haven't pitted. Yeah, yeah but, a, but a brilliant outlap. Brilliant for Danica. Yes. But here comes Briscoe. Moto and Weldon have not pitted yet, so actually this is third, but. Look at him. Look at that. He's got it. Looking outside. <laughs> on your corner. She'll make him go the long way around. She go out that. there. Yeah. On your corner. But also, he could stay up there and just outside. force her to stay on the bottom and use up outside. her tires a little bit. I mean, a little speculating on our behalf to say that this at this point. Go uh, inside. So is she going to stay? Now, she now is in the lead because those two have pitted. So this is the battle for the lead. She has six overtakes. Clear. Briscoe has nine. And, and he's, he's on and it. He just used it. Yep. yep. And did you see her car move when he came back down in front of her? You could just see a little bit of movement from the rear of her car. Nothing crazy, but yeah. that just he showed just the he showed some muscle there. But fellas, what you saw in the last couple of laps is a point of emphasis for Danica Patrick for over a year. And they analyzed Danica's performance in previous seasons. They felt she needed to get up on the wheel quicker after a pit stop when the tires are not up to pressure yet. You saw a great display of how good the learning curve has been for DP in that area. She did that, Jack. You're absolutely right. On board with Dario Franchitti, who is currently shown in seventh position. Power third, Marco Andretti is running in fourth. But up front, it is Danica Patrick running in second spot. Ryan Briscoe is the leader. Tony Kanan and Ryan Hunter Ray are having one heck of a battle for seventh position. Look at this. Man. And these two guys have formed a special bond at Andretti Autosport, really thinking they've helped each other out. A long time ago, as we stay on board with Tony Canano, I mentioned that he's going to be at Eldora Speedway this coming Wednesday, a track, of course, owned by Tony Stewart, to 
participate in the prelude to the dream, which is a dirt race for dirt modifieds. That will be interesting to see how TK does on the dirt. Meanwhile, here is third, fourth, and fifth, Power Dixon Andretti. Or rather, uh, Power Andretti Dixon. Power, however, has to save fuel because, remember, he pitted way before these other cars. Robbie? Well, Ziggy, your girl's in second place, Danica Patrick. How is she approaching it right now? I mean, earlier they're saying, hey, she maybe doesn't want to use up her tires early on that low line. Are you just biding your time, or are you still trying to take the lead? Uh, we still would still like to be on the lead. We're sort of holding off a little bit, but Briscoe's definitely fast. She's doing a great job out there. You know, we'll save it and see. We've still got 28 laps to go, so we'll see. What can you say to her? Are you being a coach like Phil Jackson is for the L.A. Lakers? Are you trying to pump her up at all from the box? Yeah, well, yeah, we, we like to, but she does a good job of doing it herself, and uh, she's just driving a great race. We just can't seem to stay with uh, Briscoe right now, so but she's doing a great job. Yeah, and it started with a happy Danica yesterday and a lot of silence today, so that means she's happy tonight. Briscoe has eight overtake, overtake assist pushes left. Danica has six. Power has 11 and Dixon 10. But it has been just a great performance by Danica Patrick to run with the leaders all night long. And here now is Dixon trying to get the third spot from Will. Yeah, these boys have all been shuffling back and forth here. You saw Marco in the middle, Dixon in the back, now Dixon's back up trying to get to power. And, and I think the, the key point you mentioned is he came in on lap 171, and he's not gonna make it to the end without saving some serious fuel, that and, being power. And for Will Power, don't forget, he's driving a car out there that had an A-arm jammed That's underneath right. it that they fixed with tape yep, yep. <laughs> and he was making a run for the lead earlier but I think the reason he's back here in this position he can't go he's got to lift on occasion or do something because of when he pitted again he's got to save fuel to make it so why doesn't he get behind those guys and really save fuel if Just it's that big of a concern well, and then say okay we're good with five laps to go and say okay get back by Bobby, I can answer that question. The major issue is the fact that both, both Will Power and Alex Tagliani, they figured they would need at least five caution laps in order to go the distance without another stop. Okay. Well, just 21 laps to go with Ryan Briscoe out in front of Danica Patrick at the Firestone 550. Could history be made? Boys, move over. The lady is coming through. Danica Patrick wins a twin ring, Motegi. And that was Danica Patrick's one and only win in the Eyes on IndyCar Series, an emotional one. She has given it all she has, has tonight and is currently running in second, dropping off of the leader, Ryan Briscoe, by a little bit now, but still a great run for Danica tonight. But we have 14 laps to go, and anything can happen, so don't go away. And here is this great battle for third and fourth position. Power, Dixon, and Marco Andretti. You know, when you said that about Danica losing a little ground to Briscoe, she said a faster lap than him, and now it's come back yeah. again. So, I mean, just kind of going back and forth. I thought for a moment that power was, he was going low enough. I wondered if he was going to turn on to pit road. That is still the question mark for power. If he has to pit, remember, he is the point leader. If you pit, you're going to lose a yep. ton of positions. Yeah. And, and Jack's point is they need five yellow laps is what he said. So he said they can't conserve fuel and get behind that pack to get to the end. They got to have a yellow, so why not race hard? Yep. And, hope Anyhow, for and hope for a yellow. Don't, don't conserve because you, you got to have that yellow. I thought he would have been a little closer. I thought he had a little tighter window that he could have saved fuel and made it. But uh, again, that's, we'll just have to see if they think they have it to make it. I want Marco to get in here and shake it up with these boys. <laughs> Ten laps to go.
Dario Franchitti, the winner of the Indianapolis 500, is currently running in sixth position behind Marco by about five seconds. So he is not a factor tonight, at least at this point. first and second and now back here to third fourth and fifth just giving you a perspective on what's happening up front but keeping a closer eye on this battle and here is Weldon and Viso they are running in 11th and 12th position Mira 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 I'm sorry yeah um, you know but you got Briscoe there we are Here's Weldon. Weldon. Yeah. Yeah. he's running in 10th Hey, there, just as we said that, I said, come on, get up there, Marco, and shake that up. And look, at, is Dixon even sloping? He kind of went by him pretty quick there and gapped it. Maybe he must have had to dump the throttle somewhere in there, Dixon did. But we knew Bristol had the speed. At Kansas City in qualifying, he was two tenths clear on the pole here. All right, fast car. So as we thought, Alex Tagliani will need to stop. And remember, it was one lap later, if I remember correctly, that or two laps later, thank you, Robbie, that we saw Will Power stop. So you would have to surmise he's going to be short. Yep. Now Russ Thompson tells me four. So, <laughs> okay, four laps later, which means he could have a shot. Sounding pretty smooth on board there yes, with is. uh, Briscoe, isn't it? Started from pole. And we're watching very closely the 12 car of Will Power to see if he is indeed going to have to come in for the stop. Yes, he is. Yep. Yeah, should, should have stuck with the two. We had it right, Robbie. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Again, championship-wise, he will drop way back with this. This will really tighten up the race. The slow speed limit down to his pit box must seem like an eternity. Five set all the way down to the end. Low down. <laughs> Just a quick splash and he'll be out again. His teammate, Ryan Briscoe, now with about a two second advantage on Danica Patrick. And Chase and Danica would be her teammate and ready auto sport Marco back there. Two to go. Wow, when Briscoe needed to, he showed some muscle because Danica and her crew did a fantastic job at seizing the moment, getting ahead of Briscoe, and he had to steal it from her. Yeah. She took the track position and made him earn it. Unfortunately, they just don't quite have the speed to stay with Briscoe. And, and we heard that report that she was good at the beginning of stints, and that was the chance. So one to go for Briscoe. One more to go, and the race will be over. Danica Patrick is pedaling as hard as she can, but it's not going to be to much avail if Ryan Briscoe can hang together for one half lap. Ryan Briscoe crashed last week at the Indianapolis 500. He came so close last year. Tonight he started from pole and wasn't denied. His seventh career win in the Eyes on IndyCar Series. Ryan Briscoe wins for the first time this year. And the margin of victory over Danica Patrick, 1.4 seconds. Roger Penske is in a much better mood than he was last Sunday at Indianapolis. In the 20 previous races at Texas, only two that finished under green have had a margin of victory wider than a second. In 1999 with Mark Dismore and in 1998 with John Paul Jr. Ryan Briscoe wins at Texas. Robbie? With El Capitan, Roger Penske, does this take a little bit of the sting out of last week at Indy? Well, I don't know. Uh, when you think about last week, uh, Chips guys did a heck of a job, and Frank Eady gets a lot of credit for a heck of a race. We just uh, we didn't come to play last week, but uh, today we did, and uh, 
Briscoe really resumed uh, what I saw him as a great driver. This is a terrific race. I put take my hat off to Danica. She was terrific tonight. This is your sixth win here in Texas. Could it have played out any better? Because your car looks strong from the get-go. Well, I think uh, for Brian, he needed it, uh, Ryan, and also uh, Danica and Will had a tough day. But uh, overall, can't take this one going home with it. Congratulations, Roger. Thanks. Team Penske's sixth win here at Texas, breaking the tie they had with Panther Racing. And Briscoe absolutely needed this shot in the arm, guys. Yes, he did. You know, with, with getting in the after he came in at pit stop in Indianapolis, put sticker tires on and kind of washed out in turn four and got in the wall, he absolutely needed to come home with this. And he did. He delivered. You know, that I think the guy responds to that kind of pressure. Ryan Briscoe wins his fourth time on an oval and his third on an one and a half mile oval as Danica Patrick has emerged from her GoDaddy.com race car finishing in second position. Meanwhile Ryan will drive the victory lane here and we will be back to talk with him and others in just a moment. At Texas Motor Speedway, the Firestone 550 is history, and Ryan Briscoe is the winner. Back in a moment. The celebration has begun in victory lane as Ryan Briscoe wins. IZOD salutes a winning performance with the IZOD victory lane interview. Here is Lindy Thaxton. Ryan Briscoe, you just seem to start and finish at the same place at this track. 12th and 05, third and 08, second and 09. You said before this, we might as well just call it a win, huh? Here you go. Yeah, I was joking, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this is unbelievable. You know, uh, I wasn't sure about my car after warm up last night, and we made a lot of changes going into the race today. So this one goes to my engineer, Eric. Uh, great job today giving me a car that uh, was just so good in traffic on my own all day long. Thank you. We heard Roger Penske say, boy, he's really resumed his role as a great driver tonight. What's that like for you to hear that? <laughs> yeah, I needed that. Uh, it was pretty miserable coming off of Indy the way we did, and uh, we just didn't quite have it for Dario, and then I made the mistake at the end. So this win, uh, it definitely means a lot. I really want to thank the whole team, my guys here, for sticking behind me. Uh, they gave me great pit stops all day long, and, and Verizon, what a sponsor. Well, you didn't waste any time going back around Danica out there, huh? Well, I knew I was going to have to. Uh, she, was, she was showing some really good speed. Uh, got a good run and used the push to pass at, at the right time. And, uh, man, she did a good job today. I think we just had a slightly faster car. Yeah, she gave you a pretty good battle out there. Yeah, yeah, several times. It was, uh, it was actually good fun racing with Danica. And now Ryan Briscoe, Jack, has gone from seventh to fifth in the point standings. And, Lindy, sometimes it's not always about speed. I want to take you back, and I want to show you Ryan Briscoe's first pit stop. Now, let's go ahead and roll it. And pay attention to the outside because Ryan Hunter Ray is going to be coming right in front. Now, a crew has to be aware of what's happening. They hold him for just a second. Ryan Briscoe is able to proceed out. Now, after that, Ryan Briscoe talked to Roger Penske and said, hey, thanks for keeping me clean. You got to do that, Robbie Floyd, if you want to get to victory lane. Well, Danica Patrick, I said to you before we walked down to the track, I said, have fun out there. Was that fun? <laughs> That first stint was really fun. Um, man, everybody was just slip sliding around and it was like it was like shooting fish in a barrel at that in that first stint. I was just one by one by one and uh, I'm kind of bummed the yellow came out, but um, the car was really good today. And uh, you know, I think, um, you know, gosh, at, K at Kansas we were a little shy on downforce and you know, here we kind of were like, hey, we better make sure we've got enough. And so, you know, that maybe have played into, you know, Briscoe going around the outside because Gosh, I couldn't go around the outside of anybody. I mean, you know, those those lead cars, they're so good they can run the white line the whole time. And Here's you taking the lead, and I know you probably couldn't hear it over the Honda's engine, but the loud, the crowd was on their feet. Gosh, I, you know, it was so great to, to get into the lead again. And, um, you know, thank you so much to all the guys. They had great stops, and my engineer, Eddie, did a great job with the car. We, uh, we hit it this weekend, and... You know, I'm just really happy to put the GoDaddy car in a position where um, people are watching it and noticing it. And um, everybody did a really good job tonight. She says, you know, it's crazy, guys, when I'm saying, damn, and I finished in second place. That's what she was looking forward to. <laughs>
Great race by Danica Patrick, finishing second here to Ryan Briscoe tonight at the Firestone 550. More in a moment on Versus. Back at Texas Motor Speedway, Dario Franchitti's target Chip Ganassi crew of the Firestone pit performers of the evening, spawning a total of two minutes and 17 seconds on pit lane. Let's talk with them. Here's Robbie. And he's watching it as well, going, those are my boys. That's why I'm in the position I'm in. Absolutely. Did you see that tonight? They got me from, I think, third to first in the first stop, and all night they were on it. Last week as well, all those stops at Indy 500, every one of them, they were on it. So uh, got to thank the Target Boys tonight. Awesome job. Pretty good uh, past seven days. The you know Indianapolis 500 champion, now the IZOD IndyCar Series points leader. Yeah, it was looking good at the first half of the race there. Um, the Energizer car was really good up front. Uh, that restart, though, when some guys were ahead, having not pitted, for some reason, Justin was lapped down, running me three wide, and that lost me momentum, and it was horrendous in traffic. So I was just hanging on. Went back to something like 14th at one point, and then started picking them off one by one again. You and Scotty uh, both together at the finish. Were your cars set up similar, or did you have different styles as far as the setup was concerned? Well, we had quite similar setups, but we liked completely different things from the car. So I'm sure up high when it was all dancing around, Dixie would have loved that there. Um, but neither of us, I think, were particularly happy with the cars tonight. He finished fifth place today, and he said it could have been much, much worse. And he's a serious points leader, Bob. And for the first time all season, Will Power is not the points leader. Will Power uh, loses a position, is now second in the points to Dario. Scott Dixon and Elio Castroneves, the only two in the top ten who did not make a move. Ryan Briscoe up two. Ryan Hunter Ray loses a spot. Tony Kanan moves up one. So does Marco Andretti, and Lindy is with him. And Marco, first of all, congratulations on the third place finish. And I heard you say you came in not really expecting to finish that high. So what did it? Well, I think, you know, as a team, we kind of struggled <clears throat> in the heat yesterday. But, uh, you know, I think overnight we uh, we all kind of put our heads together and, and really uh, came up with some really good cars. We kind of had to pile on the downforce a bit. So we wanted the sense to go long. You know, that's when we were coming. But uh, I think a great, great run for the Venom team. But uh, I think for the whole team, I mean, Danica did a great job tonight as well. Oh, yeah. And coming back from uh, what we're going to show you right here in the pits, not a bad job there. Talk us through what happened. Uh, well, we just... Lost the right rear, yeah. but uh, you know, fortunately, at a place like this, it's nice and wide open. The, the high line was working for me again here, which was uh, we were lucky for that. Um, normally, when when a, a car is good, you, you you can bring it back to the front, and fortunately, we were able to do that. And we saw a lot from Ryan Hunter Ray too. It seems it's just a good night for Andretti Autosport, and that must feel pretty good for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we got a, we carried a little bit of momentum from Indy, but uh, as a team, just a great effort. We just got to keep keep working. Marco Andretti with a third place finish at Texas Motor Speedway. Bob? And his second consecutive, as matter of fact, finish. He also was third last Sunday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Briscoe wins here in Texas. Ryan Briscoe's car in victory lane covered with confetti tonight here at Texas Motor Speedway. Ryan Briscoe was the winner in this event here tonight. Tony Kanaan got knocked around a lot out there tonight. He had several close calls. Watch this. I think that was the first one that knocked you out of your seat, Bob. Or maybe <laughs> it was so. this one. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and then look at this. Danica, Danica. Patrick, yeah. He lost tons of spots on that one. And there's EJ Viso. Whoa! <laughs> I don't remember seeing that one till right there. What a night, Robbie. I wish you could replay him watching this. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. And, and some of you said you didn't even remember. You starting to get old timers? No, it's like, you know, I had so many <laughs> that I forgot a couple. <laughs> How was the car? Huh? The car was good. I think, uh, you know, it was just crazy out there at some point. Uh, I got some un unexpected move from some people and a uh, couple of the dirtiest move I've ever seen in my life. But what goes around comes around. It was tough, and especially the close call with Danica. I know that she was pretty low. You went low, and she went lower. Yeah, you may, you may ask her, but uh, like I said, what goes around comes around. When uh, when your best finish is a second place and you try to take it as a vicar, that's what happened. You know, so I won 13 races. I, I'm i pretty confident what I can do. So you want to pull moves like that? That's fine. Uh, we have plenty of ovals left. After all said and done, were you happy with the way you drove and the way the car handled tonight because you're heading towards Iowa in a couple of weeks? No, for sure, Rob. I think uh, we had, we had uh, after we got shot back to 17th, I think, at one point. So... Uh, we drove back through the field. The guys did a great stop, and uh, it was a great race. I think uh, we had a car to finish a little bit better, but uh, 
This is the beauty of Texas. You don't know what's going to happen until the last lap. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ryan hunter you start 24th, you finish 7th. In between that, a bad pit incident. This could not have been easy for you. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, got my money's worth today. I was I was back and forth, working really hard. But this, uh, you know, the number 37 IZOD team, and we always dig deep, and uh, it's, a, it's a great team to work with. We race really well. God only knows what would happen if we qualify well in some of these ovals. We're, we're working on it, but um, these guys give me a great race car. I just wish we would add a little more speed there in the end to keep up with Tony and go fight go fight up front a little more. And basically when you pulled in there, you just could not see where you were supposed to go. We could see it on your onboard. Yeah, I was I was kind of on the outside of some of the guys pulling in and, and the pits here are so wide and so dark. Um, I just, I, I pretty much lost where the guys were and it's easy to do here, but uh, that was a costly mistake. We just, we, we kept our heads down and fought back. So, I mean, from 24th to 7th and then back to the end, to the back of the pack, I think we were maybe 26 at one point. We come all the way back. It was, uh, it was a tough day. Yeah, definitely fought back. And by the way, this is your first race since your surgery. I heard you say you really couldn't even feel your thumb out there. Yeah, there's so much adrenaline going here at Texas. You know, adrenaline's an amazing thing. I, I, I could have had a knife stuck in the side of my arm, and I would have, I wouldn't have felt it with all we had going on out there today. But you know, the second I brought the car in, shut it off, it started throbbing again. But uh, the, the doctors did an amazing job on an Indy car. You know, medical has has done an amazing job and. Uh, Dr. Fisher did the surgery. Amazing, you know. Monday I was in in surgery, and and here I am on track Friday and Saturday. And Ryan, we have to ask: Will we see you again? Will we see you in Iowa? Is this your last one? God, I sure hope so. I, I love working with this team. Uh, you know, it's really disappointing when you have a team that's finished second, first, uh, is top five in the championship, and and is uh, in jeopardy of not making the uh, sixth or seventh race of the season. It's really unfortunate, but. Um, you know, this, this team's given me a great run either way. I, I, I want to be here, and um, I think we can win a lot of races together in the future. Ryan hunter -Way, we hope to see you back here too. Jack? Lenny, it's time for the final word, and that belongs to the captain. And, Roger, you said to Robbie Floyd after the race that after the Indianapolis 500, you gathered your troops together. Was it a pep talk, or was it to get refocused? Well, I think, Jack, uh, you know, I sat down with the drivers. Uh, we sat down with the engineers, sat down with the crew chiefs and said, listen, we went to Indianapolis last week. It looked like we didn't show up. We should have had T-shirts on rather than Team Penske. But uh, tonight they were focused, uh, and there's no question that, uh, you know, that we had a good car, a little bit of activity in the pits around us. Uh, but that's what you got to be able to withstand. And again, uh, Briscoe drove the race of his life. And he drove a race like that uh, in Chicago. We drove it at uh, Homestead last year, and I think that it was just a great show for us, and we're back. Uh, and again, Keslowski winning. And uh, one thing I want to say is, is my grandson Carter fell on his face yesterday, and I told him we'd win this race for him. Well, that, that's the best final word you can get. Hey, Carter, get well soon, okay? <laughs> Roger Penske wins again with Ryan Briscoe in the cockpit. All right, let's take a look at the final results here tonight. Briscoe wins over Danica Patrick, who had her best finish since her win at Motegi in 08 and only her second career second place finish, the other one coming at Detroit in 07. Two consecutive top 10 finishes for Dan Weldon and Alex Lloyd. And several of these guys really had a battle on their hands moving up from the back of the field in, in many cases. Elio Castro Nevis, one of those who crashed out, and there you see the final four. Now, taking a look at Iowa as we uh, look ahead for two weeks, it'll be the fourth straight oval for these guys. Dario trying to remain undefeated at Iowa, and Ganassi will be going for his third straight win in Iowa. Well, coming up next, Whack Out Sports. Join us in two weeks, Sunday, June 20th at 1.30 Eastern for the Iowa Corn Indy 250. IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's. For more information on the IZOD IndyCar Series, log on to Versus.com. For Jan Bikas, Robbie Buell, Jack Aroot, Robbie Floyd, and Lindy Thaxton, I'm Bob Jenkins. See you in two weeks tonight. Ryan Briscoe wins the Firestone 550 at Texas.